What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Game Over Greggy Show. I am one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside the producer slash seducer, Dennis Garmino. Hey, everyone. Hey, how you doing? I'm good. Thanks. Good. You're looking good today. Thank you. I felt your back earlier. Well, this is the first time we. This backy. is one of the first time we've done this in a long time in the morning. Right. Yeah. So I feel fresh. Nobody as knows the that. driven snow. <laughs> see, see, now you ruined it, and then you're right to the coffee. That's right what I guy, That's why. Hey. How many how, cups have it been today? This is actually, I think, lucky number three. Oh, okay, good. Good. We're gonna see if we can't get to the seventh cup by five o'clock tonight. Oh wow. We'll see how it goes. All right. Across from him, of course, the pure one, Tim Gettys. Let's him most. The man who needs no introduction, Colin Moriarty. Come and take it. You know what, I like that. I'm throwing you something new today. Come and take it. Hello. Thank you hey, for having you me today. No problem. My, my apartment. And then, in an unprecedented crossover of uh, all signs events, Rooster Teeth's car. Hey, Kara. Holy. Damn it. I fucked it up immediately. How, here's the problem. And <laughs> this will go you, back. Why would this you will default go back to Kara? Because like, I, right I will tell you right now. I had a long conversation with Christine about this today. Is that when you read comic books, you come up with your own pronunciation. So have never met a Kara before. I read Supergirl. Kara is zor And that was what it was my entire... For fucking... What? 30 years before I met you? I don't think I've ever met another. <laughs> well, now you got to change it. It's Kara. Right, fine. Kara. 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 Well, hi. Thank you Kara. for having me. Hey, I'm no excited. problem. Thanks for coming. How you doing? I'm doing great. I'm excited. You sure? I think. All right. You I'll two are it. a couple. You've been yeah. talked about many times. You're his girlfriend. Yes, and he's my boyfriend. My boyfriend. <laughs> there, 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 there it is. Yeah. How's that feel, huh? It's good. Is it weird I'm having her on the show? This. We've talked about no, it a lot on the exciting. show. We've drunk dialed her before on the show. Yeah. Now she's here. How does that feel? To be drunk dialed during the show? Yeah, by us. Yeah. Uh, it was pretty awesome. I was a little bit worried at first. I was like, oh no, what are they going to ask me? Yeah. But and now she's fun. doing it for two hours with us. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> of course, ladies and gentlemen, every week the Game Over Greggy Show posts. It is a simple show, Nick. It's a great show. A bunch of best friends gather around this table. This is the best table. A random topic best of friends, conversation. Best table. <laughs> <laughs> this is your IKEA table that you love so much. It's really good. Look, it's got schmutzing on it, though. I'll never forget I know. We got, that. We got, well, we just need a wet rag in here and it'll be all set. That's very true. Uh, we post it every Friday over on gameovergreggy.bandcamp.com. For $1, you can buy the entire show unedited, unfiltered, one MP3 to rule them all. Or if you think we aren't worth the dollar, we totally understand and agree with you. You can go to youtube.com slash gameovergreggy Monday through Friday. Each topic gets posted one by one until we can post the entire show for free. <gasps> then. Go to districtlines.com slash Game Over Greggy and buy shirts like this one. That's Oreo a great Oreogasm. Look at that shirt. A new Oreo oration had just gone up about Reese's peanut butter cups. You gotta go watch that. Were they good? I don't, don't know. Tell Find us. Don't out. Spoil it. Find out, because we're filming it after this <laughs> one. We're gonna do. All right. As always, ladies come first on the Game Over Greggy yes. show. Care uh. What is your topic? Greg. <laughs> uh, my topic is ghosts. Believe in them or not. Mm, me, we've done a conversation about this mm -hmm. a long time ago where he got into religion. I don't know your guys' take on this at all. Well, so here's my thing on this this ghost thing. Mm -hmm. So every time I go to Austin to see her, yeah, she makes me watch these ridiculous ghost hunting shows. Only hmm. one. There's there's one ghost hunting show that we watch way the too taps, many episodes. The Taps people? No, it's Ghost Adventures because I think Zach Bagans is really hot. Oh, motherfucker. So, this is the guy that. who's like yacked, right? And he's got like spiked yeah. up hair. He's like, all right, today we're going to this basement. It's, blah. it's entertaining. It makes me laugh. It's true. It's entertaining. So. I remember I was there with the one time he got possessed. He thought he got possessed yes. or whatever. Yeah, he flipped out. So it'd be one thing if she just watched it, but she like DVRs this. Yeah. Like this is her life, is this ghost hunt. It's not my life, but it's something <laughs> that I like to watch. It's yeah. fun. Okay, so I don't believe in this ghost shit. Yeah. Not one. Not one. One not bit. one bit. Not even a little mm -hmm. bit. No. Not Why not? Just because it doesn't make sense. You're dead, homie. So you you don't even believe we, we've we we we've talked about religion a lot on this show, yeah. but like you don't believe in anything afterwards. Yeah, you just die. Just That's it. Away. You, you get snuffed out. Heaven is on earth right now. We're in. Yes, it. this is heaven. This Sorry, is Colin. Heaven. Bad news. <laughs> <laughs> not not that you believe in a heaven, just that this is all there is. So then, care uh. Yes, sir. Uh, what do you feel you? about? Why do you want to say your name like? She's I know. I'm programming myself, yeah, and I spelled it out. In his, so I, in his notes, he always puts the order of who was going to go, and he, and he actually put it's K A R E dash U H. K A R A. Like son of a. Yeah. Like but she's here's the, she's the thing: the is that I wrote uh, that before I immediately oh, fucked it up on the intro. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! What do you have? You do you believe in ghosts? So you're watching the show. I'm watching the show, considering I do a lot of special effects, makeup and whatnot, and mm -hmm. just stuff like that. I see, you know, how visual effects work. I don't know yet. I'm still trying to decide. That's why I like the show. I think that Carol, let me have a you creep up it, a little bit more onto the mic right there, so people can hear your get all up on that. I think a I think a lot of it Thank is. You. Do we need to bring? Is it? Up? it no, it's fine. Is it all media? Is it just something the media created to have? Yes. Ghosts. One hundred percent. Like yes. there is Bigfoot. There's only one ghost. Like that, what do you mean or... the media? I mean, I, well, not you so much, but him. Like ghost stories have been around no, forever. Okay, I know. So but people at campfires were the media. These TV shows are <laughs> yeah. bullshit. There's only one ghost that I'm pretty sure existed. And it was Casper. 
He's a cool. He's friendly. He's nice. He's just chilling. Do you guys see the Casper movie from the nineties with, with the, Hillary with Duff? Christina Ricci's in it. Oh yeah, Christina Ricci is in the it. original, right? Yeah. And then Hillary Duff did one. When they she did was a, really Oh yeah, she did the sequel. Yeah. That was cool. I liked that one. It had a Youngstown song. Who's Youngstown? They were a boy band. Oh, okay. oh I remember them. The three of them. Yeah. I like boy bands. So you you are inconclusive on ghosts. Yes, that's why I, that was my topic. I wanted to see what y'all thought. I see. I, I see. think they're real. Yeah. Yeah. Do you believe in heaven and afterlife and all that? I don't believe in heaven and the afterlife. I do believe that when you die, though, your the energy in your body has to go somewhere. Right? I think your so soul too. has to go somewhere. Like you've got. Colin could probably speak to this. Colin, isn't there some sort of study like like when you die, your body decreases? Yeah, it's, I think it's called the. It's like the sixteen ounces or whatever they. Yeah, call it's it. like sixteen ounces. So, so there's something in your body that leaves your body right. When <laughs> and you it's die. not just the air. But it's probably. It, it, yeah, I mean, I I don't. Yeah, I mean, this is. This or is or a, what's in your bowels? Yeah, I mean, it could be. <laughs> it could be anything. I mean, it depends. on What do you think consciousness is? Right, we're the only self-aware creatures on the planet. Us and dolphins. So. Yeah, they're self-aware, but they're not self-aware and like they have a job and a, you know like you know. Like they don't have to worry about Oh man, I gotta get to that reef today. They're self-aware. Uh, yeah. They're self-aware yeah. in that just, they have just, kids and they care about go stuff. I just don't want to go into work. But we are we you know we we're the only species that have outsmarted evolution, mm-hmm. and so what does that mean for our spirituality and our religion and stuff like that? Because religion is a product of ignorance in antiquity, right? Do you think so, that's the same with ghosts, though? Like, do people rely on that because that is a, an arm of the afterlife of like, well, you know, if we believe in ghosts, then it's not that far to believe in other forms of spirituality. Well, you have to. I mean, so if you go back to Christianity, the origins mm-hmm. of Christianity, one part of the Trinity is the Holy like, Ghost. The Holy Ghost, yeah. But if you go so back even further, part. I suspect ghost stories started, or ghosts, the idea of right. af- afterlife and stuff like that started not only with like ancient cosmology and stuff like that, but also with people were dying really young, like mm-hmm. really young, mm-hmm. like, the you know, in their 20s, and that was normal. Yeah. And, you know, the Stone Age, for instance. And so... Maybe people were thinking, like, they don't want these people to go away that quickly. Maybe they hear rustling in the trees or see, see a comet in the sky, and they think that it's an omen or, you know, a ghost or mm-hmm. someone coming back or whatever. I think I think it's a product of of ancient ignorance, um, but so I'd like to think that ghosts exist, but they, they don't. But you've never had one of those instances <laughs> where you're, like, you're walking down a hallway. Like, for instance, okay, case in point, we're going to E3 next week. Yeah. Right, yeah. God. We're doing the show out of a place called the Variety Arts Center, which is in uh, downtown L.A., and it looks like the theater... That you would expect ghosts to be in, like it, it is. It's spooky. It's spooky. I haven't described many things in my life as spooky, but this is a spooky. It's spooky place. as all hell. Um, so every, when I walk through those hallways, maybe it's psychosomatic. Maybe I just walk through and go, "Okay, I'm freaking myself out." But you see these little rinky dink dressing rooms, and like you get a flash of a noose hanging down. You're like, "What?" You do not get a flash. <laughs> <of a noose. laughs> Is that a noose? And then it's like, and then you turn the light on and it's not a noose. It's just like a power cable or something like that, right? Or you look over in the corner and you think there's like a dead body and it's not. It's just like, you know, a dead body of a cat or something like that. But um, these places freak you out a little bit and you get the feeling that there was an energy in this place that is not, you cannot be explained by modern science. Yeah. Now, I don't know what that is. Maybe it's just me being, uh, you know, a giant wuss. <laughs> Which no, I there's am. places like that. We've I'm talked about sensitive. that. We talked about that in a conversation with Colin when we talked about ghosts, which was like my grandma's house in, on Long Island used to be like really creepy to me. It's old, an old house. Well, I mean, we have we have actual old houses out east, and like the you know because here we we, we existed for longer than a hundred years, <laughs> right? And uh, I feel like every old house is everyone's grandma's house is, is creepy. I think to me, yeah, well, there is when, when she pa- when she you know passed away. When I was in college, we went there and like cleaned out everything. And it was weird. It was a weird experience. Did we bought you, a huge dump. I found so much weird shit, dude. It was did you cool. find any hands, like a severed hand? You're like, uh, you just throw it out. I found, like, I, I found, we found like that. old guns, which were awesome. I think an M- M1 Garand, which was probably my grandpa's in World War II. Right. And I think we found a 19th century, you know, single shot rifle too, which was cool. But, single shot rifle. Uh, I, I think, that, I think that there is a, cre- there, there's, there's a difference between eeriness. Yeah. Which maybe is a product of ghosts and ghost stories. And then actual ghosts that exist mm-hmm. well, because so what, is a, what is a ghost that's what i was gonna say too are we talking about just like spiritual energy stuff like you're talking about nick or is it an apparition are we gonna i mean go through yeah i think ghosts? i think what i'm talking about is more of like the energy that comes from a human mm-hmm. being's body after they die i don't i don't so what's believe, that do i don't know it doesn't do anything it just exists in so our in our real so, so you tell me you reality. die and then you just become this energy well i have there's lots of theories on it obviously there's a theory that that you know you die and you hit a level of purgatory before you're accepted into whatever the next thing is and that purgatory means you have to walk the you know old ghost men, mythology is you walk the earth until you have the unresolved thing resolved right which I'm, I'm i'm either mixing up with really old books that i read once when i was a kid 
or the Jennifer Love Hewitt Sounds like Ghost Whisperer. Oh. This is also oh. like the Sam Whitworth show that just got canceled. Yes, being, being human. human. Yes. That's exactly yeah. right. Mm-hmm. Um, so like Susie, Susie Q. Q. Thank you. The oh, first you Disney Channel oh the first <laughs> Disney <laughs> original movie <laughs> <laughs> starring the Pink Ranger. That's amazing. We uh, well, also the only movie starring the Pink Ranger. We no, uh, there's a gymnast one too. Okay, I remember that one. I mean, what you're talking about basically in, in Catholicism is purgatory, and you keep doing it over and over again. Or in right. some in some Far East religions, the idea that you you know karmic have karmic debt and come back is a rock or something. If you oh my God, up. you're coming back as Portillo. No God, you're coming oh back God. as a wiener dog. Hey, dude. You can't come Nick's back as a rock because rock. you know, rocks aren't alive. You come back to something else that's living, right? So that's why you're. No, you can, you over. you. Well, they didn't know that. You can come back as. So, they, so rock. There's people who are like, I'm gonna be a rock. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. Isn't it Buddhism or? It, um, don't look at me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not. I don't know much about Far East religion. But no, they do. I mean, they say that, you know, they didn't have scientific know-how or at least beyond like what they thought were like the ancient yeah. elements and stuff like that, like air and earth and stuff. But um, yeah, I mean, you paid a like, karmic debt depending on how you lived your life and what you did, which I like. See, the, the cool thing we talked about with religion and spirituality and ghosts and all this stuff is that it gives you a nice you know, a nice little way to live your life the right way morally and stuff like that. So you yeah. don't suffer the consequences of going to hell or coming back as a rock or living in purgatory. But right. I, I still think that I think it, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't jive with science. What so would be worse though, going to hell or just being a rock for the rest of eternity? <laughs> well, things like don't they want to the Isn't the rock the goal though? Like, don't they want to be one with nature and stuff? I, I think they want would rather like be a butterfly. Don't they? Tra- they transcend, right? Isn't that like the whole thing? Like once you've, mm-hmm. once you, once your spirit has done everything, then you reincarnation kind of a thing. Yeah. Well, it's is that Nirvana? Like when you? No, I think they when were. You achieve Nirvana. Yeah, I don't know. That's the goal of that, I think. Bliss, yeah. well, Nirvana. I have like a high schooler's education on, on on this particular topic, but I think that that's what it is. You transcend, like once you've done everything, then you, then it's over. Mm. See, little Greg Miller was obsessed with ghosts, thanks to Ghostbusters. Thanks to the Ghostbusters, oh, yeah. and bought all sorts of books. I was going to be a parapsychologist. I was thinking, really, when I was a really young kid, you know what I mean? Not <laughs> understanding that that would be a fool's errand that would go nowhere unless I had a TV show. If only I knew reality TV yeah. was going to take off like that. Only you're the next Zach Bacon. You still can. Yeah. It's not too late. We could get you a deal with Well, that. see, that's the problem now is <laughs> right that it's now. so... What Colin's saying is correct, right? It's so hard to believe. Like, I'm not calling any shit down on me. I don't want anything to come after me. But here's, you're like... Here's how, how I think your show should go. Yeah. Can, can, I, can I pitch you Can we call it the really real Ghostbuster with Greg? And then in real it's just life, Ghostbuster. Ghostbuster. <laughs> with a dad with a hyphen. Ghostbuster. Ghostbuster. With Ghost a hyphen. Buster. Yeah. And he has a monkey. You have to have a monkey. <laughs> I think the entire show for the Ghostbuster, which, uh, yeah. this is really starting to come together in my brain, is every episode, it's 13, se- 13 episodes a season, and all of it builds up to, like, you don't find anything, you don't find anything, and then we spend all the budget on the 13th episode, oh, okay. where we make the fucking house collapse, like the poltergeist yeah, at the yeah, end, yeah. where it just eats itself. Yeah. <laughs> and Greg's like, did you get that? And we're like, yeah, and that's it. And we never come back. See, the thing about, when you were when I was a kid thinking about being a parapsychologist and I'm reading all these books about hauntings and ghosts and Amityville mm-hmm. Horror and all that. Dun- Amityville Horror? Dun- 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 yeah, you know that one. You've seen that house. I have. You yeah. went there before right, you, you right, played. Right, right, right near where I'm from. Yeah. Um, it was easier to believe back then, right? Because, okay, like I had neighbors who like totally would be like, oh yeah, you know, in our old house it was haunted and then you'd hear boots walking around upstairs and like, it, I, you know, I, I obviously grew up idolizing all the Ghostbusters and then the actors who portrayed them and Dan Aykroyd is so gung-ho that ghosts exist and does all this stuff right but then is as this is just like bigfoot and loch ness and everything else as we've moved into this age where i can film anything at the drop of the hat it's like all of the like incredible incredible you know amazing stuff is dropped off right mm-hmm. like it's just totally knows because like now it's like well why wouldn't you film it with your phone or your gopro or whatever You're like yeah how's how's bigfoot not on yeah. youtube right now yeah exactly Legit. Yeah, and so that's the whole thing of, like, now it's so much harder to believe, but I am still someone who believes in God. We've talked about this before, right? And I have all these occurrences. For me, little things of, like, lights always go out when I'm walking on the street, right? And I always consider that's just him saying hi or it saying hi or whatever. Yeah, the universe, right? Paying it forward. What up, Greg? Yeah, exactly. There's some lights. (laughs) It's all I need. (laughs) It's all I need. But, like, in that same thing of, like, I don't... You talk to these people who've had, like, uh, okay, on Up at Noon, we had the Murder Soul Suspect developer on, right? And he said everybody has a ghost story. And it's like... I, I don't really. I have other stories people have told me, and I asked him what his was, and his was, you know, that he was asleep and he had this thing walk through his room and then walk out like the wall or whatever. I forget. You can go watch it on IGN.com. That was but just it, a child predator that was in, that infiltrated. It was himself. predator, man. Walked through the wall. Predator, man. <laughs> but the thing about that, right, is like that he was, you know, he had come, he was coming out of sleep when that happened. And like I've had that thing where you wake up and you're, you have that sleep paralysis. When I, I remember being convinced there was like a, something sitting on my chest or pressing. You get my sleep chest. paralysis? I, well, I, it's I only get, like I get once it. or twice. I get it all the time. And it was like it's one of those really things. Scary. Of, yeah, exactly. But then you come back to reality and you're like, wait, no, like this is a thing, and that's what's happening. Blah blah blah. So Wait, what is this thing? 
Sleep paralysis? Sleep yeah. paralysis is when you... It's like a problem with your brain when like your brain wakes up but your body doesn't. You can't move, but you're awake. You wake up paralyzed. I have. I get it. I get it probably a couple times a week. It's like pretty for my like most of my yeah. life. Yeah, it's pretty. Te- it's pretty terrifying. Like, is it still scary? You ha- yeah, because you because there's an inherent fear. You think that there's something in the room with you or something like right. that. But also like you can't move. Like you have to like really like I have to like sit there and like. How long and, like, does that last for? It feels like forever, but it probably only a few minutes. Like I have to really sit there and like. I've like learned how to deal with it. Like where I'm like I have to like sit there and like keep my eyes closed because you can't open your eyes and. And uh, like, will myself to move. Like, yeah. once you start moving, then like you're Pretty out. Good. Yeah, it's really scary. The, the whole Dredge album, El Cielo, was about sleep paralysis. Really? Yeah. So then you, you talk about why we're not seeing more, and then you talk to people who have stories. And so much of the stories, I think, are people looking for that, and and, and then misattributing a coincidence if that's what it is, right? Because like the three I always think of are, you know, my friend's dad got remarried, right? And we, at the wedding or whatever, like, (laughs) only the ghost would do that. Uh, uh, A ladybug flew in and landed on their hands while they were, like, exchanging rings or whatever. And, like, the ladybug was, like, her mom's, like, thing. Like, that was, like, one of her, it'd be, like, a wiener dog landed on their hand when I'm dead. You know what I mean? Like, that kind of thing. (laughs) And so that, that, for them, that was, like, like, that was, like, you know, that's its thing there. (laughs) Mom is here, right? Like, mom is here being a part of that. And same thing when, with my mom, when, or maybe it was my aunt, I forget. I think it was my mom, whatever, it doesn't matter too much. But one of them, when my grandmother was dying, I was young, uh, they said, you know, are you getting ready to pass, mom, blah, 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 you know, give us a sign from the other side, you know, when this happens. And so then they were looking for anything yeah. out of the ordinary. Yeah. It's like one time they turned on the exhaust fan, right, and all this, like, junk fell out of it or whatever. And that was enough for them, right? That was enough for them to believe that that was the sign and blah, blah, blah. And then at the funeral for my grandmother, I remember this, like, when whoever stepped up to do the eulogy, they read my aunt's, like, eulogy. She couldn't get up there. So, like, the priest read it. And when he stepped up to the pulpit, like, it was, like, one of those movie moments, right, where all the clouds outside parted and, like, this sunshine mm-hmm. ray comes down on him while he talks and it's like for people grieving or looking i feel like you find that and so then it's that then it gets back to this whole argument of you know faith versus science right like how much can you attribute to one or the other and like this is the this is the whole like kill switch built into the bible right of like people always try to chip away at your faith and say this isn't real but it's up to you to believe in faith and believe that this is you know what i mean like, believe what we're telling you exactly <laughs> and we'll change it all when copernicus fucks everything up and we'll change it again when luther fucks it all up and we'll change it again that's the problem with religion well, speaking of stories, though, Greg, because you yeah. were talking about, like, lights and stuff going off and weird things happening, looking for it. Um, when my grandfather passed recently, um, he has a light that's right by his chair because he had his chair. You know, old people always have their chairs. Yeah, yeah. they don't like, like home. to move. Yeah, I have a yeah. chair. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? There you go. And uh, he had this lamp right by it. And um, when he passed, obviously, my grandma, I guess, unplugged it to plug something else back in. So no electricity at all is going to this lamp. The clock dings at the time that he died, and the lamp goes on. But it's unplugged. That's fucked up. So, and then wasn't there something about Bambies and stuff? It was like a deer. There was a movie called Bambi. There was there was a movie (laughs) called Bambi. But like someone when he died and he liked deers and the deer. Stop playing your head so much. Huh? You're robbing them of your profile. They're just looking at the back. There it is. Woo! Blue steel make it. There you go. Isn't that his profile though? When he looks at you? Well, no, but he was looking at her. Oh. So he was doing like the whole. He's getting this thing over here. Yeah. 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 Well, I want to show them everything. Wild. Okay, just like I'm, they're gonna make a 3D model of you now. Good. <laughs> 3D model. I've been waiting oh, God, for this. What's the, make what's, a 3D what's the Bambi too. story? Oh, um, my grandparents have deer, um, like out back in their backyard because mm-hmm. they live on a Texas. bunch of land mm-hmm. in Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Yeah. Oklahoma. Is Middle of nowhere. Texas. Yeah. Bum fuck nowhere. They're all flat land. Is it the oh, place yeah. where Carrie Underwood's from? It's actually probably. Their I have to sing the whole song to figure out the song, the name of the place. So I'm gonna go ahead. Great. We'll wait. Where 69 meets 40, there's a single stoplight town. And back when I was really young, mm-hmm. part of it burned down. Uh. And Friday night, Sonic and the grocery store. Laughing. It takes forever. <laughs> to, I ain't in Shakota anymore. Is it like Shakota? Shakota. No, it's called Ponca City. Okay. Which well, is about the same. That was Shout a fucking waste of time. It was a great <laughs> song. Everybody <laughs> downloaded it. Carrie Underwood, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, so um, there was a, a big buck. He was into deer and whatnot, and it was out of season. And also, the day after he died, uh, one walked up. That That's where it comes into the thing you were talking about of 
are people looking for something? Right. And of course, you know, my grandma was like, oh, his favorite, you know, Buck came up and we saw him in the window. So that had to be, you know, grandpa. Right. Yeah, exactly. I would, see, I wouldn't believe it was my grandmother. I love my both my grandparents, but they had very distinct personalities. My grandma Scarpino, all she wanted to do was feed you. Grandma Scarpino. <laughs> grandma Scarpino. The That's the yeah. best name. That sounds like she would feed you she, really well. She, I used to go to my grandma Scarpino's house and I, I love it because she would always be like, first thing and last thing would always be like, are you hungry? <laughs> oh, I'd be like, grandma, I've been eating for four. Yeah, <laughs> let's keep going with this. But she used to have this pantry, right? And the pantry, you'd go in the back, she'd be like, go in the back, get whatever you want out of the pantry. And the pantry was like a smorgasbord of really bad things you could feed a kid. Not the least of which was the giant Hershey bars. Damn. Oh my God. You know what I mean? The ones that are like this the big. Walgreens, they're like $3 yeah. instead of. She used to go to this place called The Base. She'd go out of the base. And later in life, I realized it was March Air Force Base. Like because my grandfather was in the Air Force, so she got free access to the base all the time. No taxes. But no taxes, which is great. Uh, but she would buy nothing but this, like Wrigley's gum and Hershey's bars. <laughs> like that's all she would buy. So I'd go in and I'd start Sounds with like a Hershey a bar. I get, get a Hershey bar, eat a Hershey bar, and then she'd make me a meal, and then we'd have dinner. Um, which is Where's why the I gum was, come in? Uh, the gum was afterwards. You okay. eat it, but it was always stale. Like Wrigley's gum. Yes. Was always stale. Yeah. Why does grandparents always have really old gum? Because they, 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 they don't eat it. They buy it for you, and they don't have the eyesight to look at the born out, like the the eat by date. Is there an expiration date on gum? Probably not. I don't know, maybe. <laughs> anyway, long story short is I would not believe my grandmother came back unless if she was like a buck. If I saw a buck walk by me, that wouldn't be enough. It'd have to be a buck with like a large pizza and a Hershey bar. That just Chewing gum. To me. <laughs> Grandma Scarpino. Yeah. I'm like, oh my God. Kill me. <laughs> and then she has to immediately turn around and judge me. Like that's what has to happen. Like, are you wearing those pants out? I want, the, at least if ghosts were going to come back and, and visit you. I mean, like if I came back. In the afterlife, I would yeah. only come back when Greg was having sex, <laughs> and I would only haunt them. Be like, "Hey," and I'd be in the room when Greg was. Having, I would never let like him have right sex before Greg climaxes. You're like, yeah. "I'm here." I can tell you. I, I'll tell you exactly what it would be: is that you would die and you move out of that room, and I keep the house or whatever, right? And then the thing I I hear at, at least once a night from the other room, and I don't even want to know the context of it. Is just you go. Ew! <laughs> you say I don't know what Cheryl is doing to you. She's tickling you or doing something. Cheryl and I do like like try to gross each other out like all the time, like really gross, like really gross faces or just you know, especially because I'm fat and I have a you know the gut. I try to just like you're, wiggle it in you're her face. A, a beast human being. But it's always you. Yeah. <laughs> Ew! <laughs> She's always worse. She usually likes to fart. So that would be it. I'd be about the climax, and I would just hear, Ew! Be like, you hear that? <laughs> Come in! Come in here! Can we film a conversation? <laughs> but here's here's the thing that about ghosts, and this is why it ties back into religion inherently, is because, um, go like. Does it mean only humans have ghosts? Does it mean animals have ghosts? Mm-hmm. Does it mean only carbon life forms have ghosts? Does it mean only if you believe if in something that has, has ghosts? Because I'm asking because if there's life on other planets and say it's um, nitrogen based and they breathe, I don't know, helium and they have a different life they really and they have high, a different biological voices. structure voices, yeah. and they have a different biological hey, structure we maybe they don't even, kill you maybe they don't even speak why would they have mouths I'm gonna watch Greg have sex uh, <laughs> do they have ghosts do they have <laughs> ghosts too do they, is there a spirituality in other words if there, if, if a ghost is something that happens to you if spirituality is, is something that's not tethered to it then it must be biological and we haven't found the evidence of that yet mm-hmm. you know what I mean like because yeah. then why would only human like everything breathes oxygen right everything except you, for fish they breathe oxygen it's just in the water they have gills. Burn. They breathe water with oxygen. <laughs> there you go. All right. They breathe water. Um, <laughs> so like there's cert- just certain like everything has carbon in it, right? It's like the same. It's the same like few like everything's the same no matter if you're human or um, you know the low like plankton. Right, right. And it's, so it's like why would that be different? Yeah. This is the, this, and this is this is a weird this is the question. See, I don't even want to go that deep into it. I just think ghosts are cool, so yeah. I want to believe mm-hmm. in them. And I think that's ultimately like for me as a person who like I have probably an overactive imagination anyway. The concept of there being something extra out there is just cool to me. Yeah. So here's the thing, though. We've talked about aliens. We're like, okay, there's the green-looking alien. We all kind of are just like, when we think aliens, we're like, that's what an alien looks mm-hmm. like. We think ghosts. It's one of two things. It's either, oh, just a dude but transparent or sheet. Where the fuck did the sheet come from? Yeah. It's an easy costume. It's close enough. Yeah. It no, gives but, you yeah, a where humanoid did... form. <laughs> But why a sheet? Why would that look My like guess this? is just because of Hallmark. Like, any Halloween costume, like, they just started putting that out, and that became the, yeah, the yeah. idea. Ghost. I mean, the, 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 the mentality is that the, the disembodied spirits don't look like anything, so they get under sheets so that they can float around and be seen. Is it really? Mm. That See? But that, that's go. a really good answer. But, I mean, I, might, I may now have I just made that up. Well, that was brilliant. There you go. It sounds, like, it sounds Victorian. It sounds like something it that sounds was like made up by fiction authors. Shitty-ass Halloween costumes. Yeah, the mm-hmm. people were just poor, and they couldn't. Yeah. How are you sure. going to make yourself transparent? So they just like, oh, put a sheet on. Yeah. 
So, okay, so Colin, you said if you were to come back as a ghost, you would want to watch Greg have sex. Not necessarily watch, just interrupt it. Okay. Yeah. You're not going to look at it. You don't look at it. You don't My see goal would be madness. for Greg to never have an orgasm ever again. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be up to the challenge. Would you? Yeah. Yeah, Colin, let me Starting ask you at your wake. <laughs> Colin, let me, ask you this, let me ask you this question. Would you Have you seen the movie Ghost? Yes. Who has With it? Patrick Swayze. Yes, of course. Classic film. If you haven't seen it, it's amazing. They have this great scene at the end. It doesn't matter. And it's like they're like making love with. You know, while they're claying something, it doesn't matter. Well, claying something. You know, like they're, they're, they're sculpting. They're throwing clay. Oh, they're sculpting. I remember the movie. I know what you're talking about. They weren't making clay. <laughs> they were making. They were. They were making a pot out of clay, there and the go. hands were very indicative of where the hands were going to go. About 30 minutes later, when we don't see that. That's scene. the that's, verbiage, right? Throwing clay. Isn't that what they call it? Isn't that what they? I. That's what, what I call mm-hmm. it. That's, right. That's. That's. that's, that's, that's <laughs> I think you're right. I think that's you're how right. I roll. I like to throw that clay all over the room. Um, I don't know what that means. <laughs> no one does. But there's a great part in Ghost where he has to learn how to physically manipulate things with his energy. Like it's an energy transfer so he can actually start touching things. Mm-hmm. How, would you put the effort in so that every time Greg was about to climax, you could just poke him? <laughs> or like poke him right in the balls? Poke him right in the balls. Yeah, yeah right in the balls. probably make it faster. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what he's into. <laughs> it'd, be like, it'd be like I could say I like poke him in the ass, but that might help him. You know? <laughs> oh, you think if you put a little poke up in the, in the soft spot? I mean, depending on like, you know, if you're into that. You know, that's cool. Some guys low. like that. Some that that really helps. You know, Greg, are you a pain slut? Is that one kind of thing where you like if someone punches you right in the balls? Greg, oh, that wouldn't work. That wouldn't work. <laughs> that wouldn't work. No, so I punch him in the punch balls. Punch me in the balls. That'd stop it pretty hard, probably. I'm uh, just telling you, if I go before I'm Greg goes, it's a good problem. Greg, Greg, Greg and I have often talked. I mean, and I mean often talked about who's going to go first. I want. Yeah. Can you do me a favor though? If you're going to do that with Greg, can you also try to be in the room? Do the opposite with me though. So like, Cheer just give on. me words of encouragement. Like you're doing it. Like I want to be looking over and see you and just have you go. No, he has to do the thumbs up thing you do. Oh, the, the Terminator thumbs up? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I'll give you words of encouragement. I'll get like a hockey organ in there and play some like... Some skank, 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 See, now you're going to be looking for that. Right? Oh my god, that'd be amazing though. It would be... It would, it would add, I'll help you out. It would add such a different and I'll better have, dimension to married sex. I hope that at some point in your life you're having sex and you just hear that hockey song. <laughs> and you're I'll, just going to be like, it is. Yeah. And I'm you stop for just a minute and you're like... Yeah. One tear rolls on your oh, face. No, yeah. One, oh, no, yeah. one, run, one tear rolls on your face. And your wife's like, what's wrong? You're like, C- I know Colin's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Colin Murray already just passed. <laughs> Did you finish having sex? There's like See, a the only, the only, I have to keep going because the only flaw is if you can't stop during married sex. If you stop, it gives both of you the opportunity to not want to do it anymore. <laughs> You're just like, we should, uh, we should just go watch Law and Order. <laughs> so, so, Greg, what would you do if you, were a, if you had to come back as a ghost? Would you interrupt Colin? <laughs> what would I do if I was a ghost? No. I'd I'd be like I'd be the cool ghost that like would I wouldn't scare people but I'd make my presence known like you know shadowy stuff moving stuff who would I do it imagine to? a ghost YouTube channel they're going oh viral oh my god well there well there's that girl who did it but I mean there, she was all fit she's making fake ones yeah admittedly but they're really good Greg, yeah, I, Greg I would eat all the food like where, where's the cri- well, where's all the crystal sauce who the hell ate all of the <laughs> leftover <laughs> chicken wings see that's the big question now do I haunt a Portillo's or yeah. do I haunt like CJ's wings Linda. in Columbia? Or do I haunt Mizzou? Wing wings, maybe. Or like, today yeah. I I might just go haunt Mizzou because today I told Christine, do me a favor. If I die, notify Mizzou because I got the alumni magazine and I always get to the back. I'm like, oh, who died? And I want to make sure I'm in there one day. Yeah. I want to know that I'm in there. <laughs> you should just haunt Linda forever. Just Linda yeah. over at the. No, you shouldn't haunt Linda. You should help Linda achieve greatness. Yes. Linda by haunting for her. Press. Yeah, you've already depressed her by fucking hanging up on her twice. I didn't depress her. I asked her questions and made her famous. Yeah, you talk show. to her like people talk to people on on phones on TV shows, like when they don't say bye and shit like that. But no one actually ever talks like that. I hate I hate that shit yeah. on TV shows. I really hope Everyone's like, oh, all I'm right, great. Who funny. fucking talks like that? <laughs> you say, all right, I'll see you sooner. Okay, I'm not gonna good see talking to you. Bye. I'll probably talk to her in the next week. I know. You can at least say goodbye. Everybody go see Linda at the Portillos on North Avenue. Or Linda. Um, she has Linda, a job still. You know, border of uh, <laughs> Bloomingdale and Glendale Heights. I'm sure she has a job still, but she also probably has like. A security guard right now. And yeah, and a, a fucking lawyer extra. who's about ready to get a restraining order against the game over. Change the locks on her fucking door at home. She's terrified right now. We put her into a state of terror. Is Portillo's fast food, Linda? <laughs> 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 you know I mean, like every time she hears your voice, she just immediately pees herself. She evacuates her bowels. Kara, where would you haunt? Oh goodness gracious! I would probably, I'd probably go. Hmm. I'd probably just go and just mess with a lot of people, just like randomly, just Random. kind of move move their stuff around, or and have them be like, 
what the hell's going on? And then it's like, well, sorry, I guess Kara's here messing up shit again. Or so go and do someone's life. like, like anytime you maybe I'd go and like do everyone's shit, it just makeup never works. or something if I could. Speed. Yeah. You're going to do their You want to be the makeup ghost. I would do, yeah, I'd be the makeup while ghost. While they sleep and stuff? Yes, while That'd they sleep. That would be so terrifying. It's like, yeah, so it's like y'all are asleep totally and y'all wake up and you have makeup on. Who was it? Oh, Kara must have been here. You could make a lot of money with that though. If you did girls makeup while they're sleeping so when they wake up they're just ready to go. Start doing it right now. Start it right now. Start. Well, yeah, that we don't even need to be for this. No, just, All right, I'm out. That's awesome. No, I'm going to take a reservation. Say up front, give me $20 right now, and when I'm dead, I will come back and do your makeup as a ghost. Yeah. There you go. That's a really good idea. A lot of people will do it. You can do I don't know about that. anything, though. You do for drugs, too. Like, when I'm dead, since I'm not, I won't, I won't, it won't be illegal for me to give you drugs, because there's no laws against dead people. Oh, that's true. I'll come back and give you drugs, like mm. weed. You can be the best weed dealer on the planet. Think about that. Not that you should buy illegal substances and or do them, because that's illegal and immoral. In most places. In most places. But Colorado. not in death. Not for much longer. Nothing's illegal in death. Mm-mm. In Kim Denver, they have an area where you can smoke pot in the airport. Didn't know that. That's awesome. I had to stop at the airport in Denver's Denver. Denver's so far Freedom. ahead of us. What? <laughs> I saw Freedom. all of their other crimes Freedom. are down now, right? Isn't that what I saw? <laughs> like, they did the year-over-year year comparison. I'm sure you saw these stats. You read about everything in the whole wide world. That, like, you know, murders None are None of us read I'm very, intrigued by mar- I'm very intrigued by marijuana prohibition. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it makes sense. Right. Let, let the people do whatever drugs they want. It's yeah. their prerogative. Exactly. If they want Tim, to where are you going to haunt? I don't know if I'm going to hunt. I think I'm just going to You have like, to. But I don't want to hunt. I just want to be cool. I just want people to not be scared of me and just be like, yo, I just want to hang out and do cool things. I mean, Alfredo. Yeah. yeah. Definitely Alfredo. Yeah. But like, I wouldn't want to mess. I'd mess with him. <laughs> you wouldn't. Yeah, yeah. I would definitely mess with him. But then I just want to be like, I just want to hang out. Yeah. But the problem with messing with Alfredo is that he wouldn't care. He'd be like, oh, hey, Tim. And you'd be like, no matter what you did, it wouldn't phase him. He's such an we, unfazed that's person. That's good, though. I just want to hang out. I just want to be ghost That'd Tim be cool. and Alfredo. Like, I think I'd have the... to kill him, too, though. Because yeah. like, you can't be like... No, you can't have him live a normal life. Yeah. That's just Would you that's not going to happen. Or you just go and erase be... all of his computers. The last place I want to be is in Alfredo. Yeah. In that head. Uh, or in any, in just, Alfredo. Let's not think about that for a second. I do not want to. I'll tell you what I would do. I would... Have you guys seen the Game of Thrones? You've seen the show Game of Thrones. I want to haunt... The game, we call it. The game. It's the only game that matters. That and hockey. Go Islanders. Islanders. Too late for them. Now you gotta you gotta cheer for the Rangers. Go Rangers. Go Texas. Nope. Go Texas. Yep. Go, yeah. Te- go, yeah. Texas. go Texas. Um I would haunt a tree, and here's why. So that people, if they had problems, could come to me like that big tree mm. and see I would give them the vision of what to do with their life. How would they know that though? Be- they'd have to figure it out. And then you'd be you, like, like, Tim would like figure one it person out. would pass and you'd give them the vision. Yeah. yeah. And and the, come... They just see the tree, right? And like that'd be like a wog. So anytime like they go into Portillo, Portillo would lead them to the yeah. tree. Yeah. <laughs> and then they'd go over and they'd be like, oh, what should I do with my life? Should Ooh, I so, Portillo? So you're going to be the tree of life. I'm going to be the tree of life, basically. That'd be and awesome if, if you and Portillo teamed up in the afterlife. Oh, I'm totally going to team up with them. We're a badass together. We're like Turner and Hooch. We're like canine. Turner. He's oh going to be really useful. Um, but that's what I would do. I would haunt. I wouldn't haunt anyone. I would just you, you'd use me as a resource. You'd be like, like Tim, imagine you're like, what should I title this video? I mean, I've often envisioned you as like the great deck of trees. Right, but life. what if you, you really help him on that? It's the one big thing, and I could be like, Tim, here's the, here's what you should do, and he'll go great, and he'll do the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like Nick, that's stupid. That's a horrible title. Nick, get out of that. It's a terrible title. Tim, <laughs> stop looking at me naked. Stop trying to make me go to the superficial. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great website. Tim. Yes. You guys are a couple. We are. So now you get to go next. Okay, cool. What's your topic? This this will be fun. So my topic this week, it's very important, and I've often thought about this. Why are boobs so amazing? Mm. Mm. I've lived my whole life wanting to know and thinking about it because there's nothing that special about them. I think for guys, it's because we don't have them. Well, certain ones of us don't have them. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Hide your shame. Hide your shame. Mutant. (laughs) Luckily, I bought this shirt from districtlines.com slash game over Greggy to hide you my shirt. You can hide everything. It's a pretty shirt. Yeah, right it's a I, You know, for me, it's always just been because I, you know, I mean, I, guy, I think guys just A, love women's bodies, any part, it doesn't matter, and B, they're the most fascinating thing because they're probably the thing, you know, I don't know. They're just, they're, but they why? All I mean, why do we love their bodies, though? Like, why is it so chemical? It's, it's, yeah, it's science. We're just attracted. I mean, that's the whole thing, right? Is you're innate. attracted to who you're attracted to, right? Like, that's the whole thing of, like, it's the same question for like why are people why are people why are why are gay guys attracted or gay anybody attracted to the same sex right it's just the way you're built on the inside as far as your biology and there is a certain there is a certain like you know they if you study art they tell you that there is a certain like there are certain ratios that you find mm-hmm. on the human body that are more attractive to people that we view as more attractive and oh asymmetry and all that because it's symmetrical yeah right there's there's symmetry and there's also proportions and things like that and you follow that in in all throughout the like 
the entirety of any anything living. Mm-hmm. Like there, every species thinks that certain characteristics are more attractive. We are wired that way just because that's how we procreate. That's we look and say, mm-hmm. I like that. I like that a lot. We don't understand it, but we instinctually want it. And I think that there's that that probably <laughs> comes into the boob question as well. Yeah, well, you know? here's a question for Colin. Because I feel like you would Colin be more, knows the answer more informed on this than anyone else. <laughs> sure. Um, so, because I'm really stupid, I don't know the answer to this. Do everyone think boobs are awesome? No. Like, I mean, well, do sorry. Not, women, not I'll tell you who doesn't. But, women. Well, no, okay. I'm not talking <laughs> about Women that. don't like their boobs. I'm talking about, that's true. But uh, I'm talking like about. Um, <laughs> that I was going to say, can we let her talk a second? <laughs> in, like, in like other like cultures and stuff. Are there cultures that don't find them sexy? That aren't just like that, they're awesome? I don't think, I think so. like well in like African cultures when they don't like have to they wear a shirt or yeah, anything like that up. they don't cover them well, up. Yeah, so that's I would. But I, 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 I still think anything? guys would like to fondle them and stuff. Just there's something, something to hold on to when there's something undeniably Freudian about about that situation. Yeah, because the first like, boob you encounter is your mom's, is your mother's. Yeah, and like and it's like there's uh, I'm not my my girlfriend's a, a doctor. She's a psychologist, and so she can talk a lot more about this than me. We but, bring her in, but no, she won't. She won't. She, she won't. doesn't want to ruin her career, uh, <laughs> like we have. But and I'm not sure she really week ascribes to week. Freud, but I know I was always really I was always real. I don't think she actually ascribes to Freud at all, but I, I was always intrigued by that because he always identified like you're a man's sexual orientation and needs, a straight man's, I guess, which you know, uh, I guess was the norm back then. And, you know, people mm-hmm. weren't coming out of the closet, I guess, in the late 19th century, but uh, was ascribed to your relationship with your mom. And I don't know if that's if that's true or not. And I don't, it's kind of creepy to think about, but maybe well, it's sort of right. the, it makes the sense, nature versus though. nurture, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sort of but then argument. it's like, it's kind of weird. It's like, you know, you don't find every boob attractive. You know, yeah. you don't find... I don't find my mom's boobs Well, attractive. like, if you have, like, <laughs> there's just something, there's things in your brain I don't think you understand or maybe, you that know... That makes one of us you know, neuroscientists understand or whatever, where it's like, you're not attracted to people in your family, but that's evolutionarily makes sense because you don't want the same mm-hmm. genes. You want a different mm. set of genes to procreate with. Like, so there's, Unless there's different, Lannister. there's, I don't know. There's different <laughs> spoilers. It, it, I think it is in it's your head episode. or whatever. <laughs> Literally the first episode. I mean, sex is, you know, again, it's another evolutionary thing. Like we have sex for pleasure. It's an, another way to outsmart, mm-hmm. um, mother nature, or whatever. I mean, like when a cat, like a feline, uh, you know, has, um, sex, it's painful. You know, like, but really? they do, but they do it anyway. Yeah, the fe- the male's cat is like has spikes on it. Like, I think I think it's like when it when he pulls it out or whatever. It's like you hear cats scream yeah, when they so have sex. The cats are all crazy when they do it. But they do it anyway because like it's evolutionarily necessary. You know, we don't. That's do crazy. the dune cats like, like it though? I don't think so. I think dogs probably like it. I think dolphins have sex for pleasure, mm-hmm. and a few other, you know. Higher oh bears apes and I don't know. Bears I think there's a lot. I mean, I think bunch of bears have the, sex. the core of it, yeah, is the fact that you're attracted to what you're attracted to and then on top of that i think is what nick's talking about and the fact that it's like ah oh, you, know, you don't get to see boobs enough that's the problem that's true, that's true too mm-hmm. yeah so even the, it's like that's well no like but see the, but that's, but like, that's, that's like, only for guys because i don't sure. think women walk around and going like god i haven't seen a penis in a really long time i wonder what that guy's penis look like. they don't care they don't think that way most generalizing of course care but most women <laughs> oh no we have a woman here we get, we're gonna bounce every question I, off well, of that's it. the point isn't it i know i'm Perspective. open, I'm open, I'm open for questions Cara, do, do women actually show. think about guys in that way in that in that physical way or do you do your friends and you do you ever look at a guy and go i wonder what he looks like yeah really oh yeah it's fantastic. Have you thought that way about me? I'm joking. No. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> Awkward. Well. Well, no. No. You're too short. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, again, yeah, I think most of it goes down to for, for guys who are just ridiculous. I think we're more, more girls are more interested in, in like saying like, I wonder if he has a big dick. More so really? than like small. Think that way? Yeah, it's more so like that because and then like little man syndrome if someone's like really too cocky or stuff like that. They're like, yeah. I bet he has a small dick. Then he's not. He's just. That could literally describe everyone at this table. We're pretty cocky. Um, well, I know it doesn't apply to one person at least. Whoa! Oh, hey, Mario Kart. Make out. Mario Kart. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, think I was that, waiting. I don't know. I don't... I, but if I see just a random penis, I'm not like, oh, yeah. oh that's right. hot, you yeah, know? Yeah, 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 yeah. But if y'all see like a picture of boobs, then you'd be like, no, a good looking boob. It's, no? For me, it's the association. Like, like uh, I need to have, like a girl needs to be attractive. Like, you know, to have, I don't care like what she's, I don't care I what she's working with. Like, it. I can be like, well, well what if you well, only well. saw the boob though? Yeah, I guess it's like, boobs. but I'm not a boob guy. Like that was the other thing that I was oh, like okay. really interested in was like, boobs are great and that's fine. And you know, I appreciate them of course, but like, I've never understood the male obsession with boobs above 
all else. You know what I mean? Like, I like a flat stomach, you know, nice butt, nice legs, like, pretty face. Like, these are all things, like, I would actually put all of that above boobs. Every one of those. Things. Really? Yeah. Give it. Take. That's all true. Those are all amazing things. But that doesn't change the fact that boobs are just amazing. I mean, they're they're fantastic. But I'm just saying on a, on a scale, you know, if you could have, if I could have a girl with a nice ass and legs or big boobs or nice boobs, I'd have the girl with a nice ass and legs and, and she can be flatter. See, and for totally me, there's a, I've, I've always just been the kind of guy that's like, I can find something beautiful about any woman. Mm-hmm. Like there's, I think that every part's, and, and it's never been an all or nothing for me. It's like, oh, this person has like beautiful eyes or a beautiful face or whatever. And I'm like, I can sort of glom onto that and be like this is why this person is beautiful I can always find something beautiful in see the thing about flat stomach or good legs or whatever that's all stuff you can see from the outside like just tight pants tight shirt mm-hmm. the breasts are always that thing of like what am I gonna get mm-hmm. Roll, when you peel them back for the that first mystery. time that mystery yeah. that's this is a dangerous topic to talk about without sounding very stupid as I often do no but it's one of those things with boobs where it's like they 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 look great clothed yeah. There is that fear of if they don't look great when they're not clothed. Nah, I never ran into that. I mean, luckily I haven't either. Well, that, that, that definitely happens. You get, oh, but this is, the, this is the thing. It's like we put too much on the biology and not enough on like what we, you know, the, the teasing and like the imagination of, of the female form I think is actually more attractive. No, I was talking yeah, about, I yeah. that. I was talking about this understand. with my girlfriend yesterday because we were re-watching The Sopranos, which is, you know, everyone's asking like what show is better than Breaking Bad because I don't like Breaking Bad. The Sopranos is better than everything. Um, and we're and we're watching that show again and I'm like, they're always at the bottom bang right in there at the strip club and there's, whole, and there's the like best, really, best name and, for and, anything yeah, and there's like vulgar sex the scenes in the show and that's fine and like, but I, I was talking to her and I'm like, I don't need this in my fiction like there's too much sex and i'm not saying things are over sexualized or it's wrong or you can't enjoy it i'm just saying it doesn't advance the story i, I like the idea of th- like they allude to things like scantily clad women sure. and then it just goes away and then you get back to the story or whatever and i was thinking the same thing in like real life where sometimes it's more attractive to see like a pretty woman on the street and you're just kind of like oh she's she's good looking and and you know she has a great body and just leave it there as opposed to like having to like see it to believe right and then maybe it's not as good and it ruins the imagination but also puts this in heightened pressure on women to like fulfill this certain this certain male need in the 21st century to be perfect which i think is destructive oh yeah no way yeah, well, I think so. you, and i think you get you feel a lot of that well at least i did i felt a lot of that uh in my 20s where i was like okay well i obviously want to get out there and i want to experience every every woman i possibly can um and you you see the good you see whatever quote unquote not as good as far as the female form goes but it good, wasn't you take the bad you take it's the facts take of life. There you have. right there you go um <laughs> But for me, I didn't actually start really appreciating that until I was with someone that I knew I was going to marry, right? Where you're like, my, you know, my wife's body is different for me now. It's not just a thing that I'm supposed to look at. It's something that, you know, carries the soul and the brain of the person that I love. Yeah, and yeah. there's so much more. You think it carries the soul, maybe. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it carries 16 ounces. Of yeah. <laughs> 16 ounces of, of awesomeness. Um, no, but for me, and that's the thing. Like, I've been with women that I thought were really, really beautiful. And there still wasn't that connection. There wasn't that deep connection, right? And so... To me, there's like everything about my wife takes on a whole different sure. meaning mm-hmm. for me every day because of that. Um, can I still look at someone and think, oh, that woman is beautiful? Of course. Right. But I don't know. It's and on again, a different level with your wife. It's on a totally different level. See, jumping back to this part of like, I, I'm with Colin that I think a clothed, you know, for a random w- woman, random set of boobs or whatever, or body. I, I, I think it's, I like being teased more than I just like seeing. I went to a strip club, right? And like the hottest, the girl that I remember from the strip club being like, that's that's the hottest, sexiest girl here, was the girl walking around doing, sh- you know, trying to sell you shots or whatever. Mm-hmm. And she was in a bra and panties, and mm-hmm. that was it. And like you had all these other naked girls up there, but it's just like, well, there's sure. like something. Strip you know, clubs are also just gross. Yeah, they're intense. They're I love going to strip clubs. Gross. I was talking to my girlfriend about this. I love going to a strip club like every few years, just get wasted and with my friends, or whatever. And it's like because it's funny. It reminds you of how funny they are. Mm-hmm. Like I went to a strip club for the first time when I was eighteen, and I thought it was the coolest thing ever. Yeah, me and my friends. And then too. I went last year for my friend's bachelor party, and uh, like for part of his bachelor party, and we just thought it was so funny. Well, like I was, so I was like, it's so there. awesome. The like, only so times I've ever been at strip clubs have been with Nick Scarpino. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've never been to one. What? what? I know. Do you, do you, you would enjoy gold it. Club. Do you have any interest in in, in going to one ever? I feel like I would like catch something. I don't. You're not know. gonna catch anything. I know, but it just it feels like you said. I it does know, it feel feels kind of dirty. It is yeah. dirty. Well, it's supposed to. Filter. It's illicit. You know? It's illicit. You don't yeah, walk into a strip club and have all the lights on and everything is like speck and white. No, they want it to be dark and smoky. Stay out of Nevada, yeah. where you. Can, I mean, they take it a step further there. So prostitution. Well, yeah, I mean, prostitution. Should, prostitution should be legal, but like the, the you know yeah strip clubs are. I think strip clubs are almost seedier than than legal prostitution, like brothel oh, sure. prostitution. Uh, it's funny because just, like it's just like at least you're being honest when you're yeah. at a, when you're <laughs> a problem, you know like that's true that's very true so then Kara 
Yes. Do you? I want to hear more about your take on boobs. Do you think? Because <laughs> here's my thing: is I think I think girls take it all for granted, and like that that's the whole thing is that for guys who are totally I I think in my experience way more sexually wired right and it's like you know you're like ah all the time about sex or whatever right <laughs> <laughs> like it's such a big deal sex. to be oh man like breasts and oh, all the stuff right? a naked girl in general you've it's literally you've grown up with it your entire life so what does it matter to you do you think boobs are awesome um, I think they compliment your outfits. <laughs> and see, I think that's that's how a lot of I think and that's, that's how, girls... how the majority of women see it, right? Like my wife's always like, oh, I don't like the way I look in this uh-huh. outfit because she feels like the fact that she does have bigger breasts uh, sometimes makes it, it just doesn't look good in the outfit, right? It yeah, might widen around. She's like, oh, I don't want to be wide right now. I want to be you know skinnier. Yeah, I mean, like for example, like I not that not to get too crazy, but I didn't bring the bra that I wanted to bring, and I'm wearing one that I'm like, oh, my boobs don't look like they used like they usually do in this outfit and so it's like you get self-conscious about it right but as far as like being attractive attracted to other women's boobs no nothing no see yeah. i think you just take them for granted then i don't so, i think yeah, that's I the whole thing you can be totally flat or have the biggest breast in the world and it's hot it yeah, doesn't matter no, like fact definitely every girl is hot that's the other thing too like you know what i mean like so like you yeah. were talking earlier with the whole like perfection angle and yada mm-hmm. yada yada that like media those motherfuckers around the campfire, that yeah. media, Kim K, content, continue to push like right, like it's not that at all. Well, and that's the other. You're thing. a girl. You're My hot. Whole topic is boobs. <laughs> boobs are awesome. I'm not saying big boobs are awesome. I'm saying just boobs, all boobs, mm-hmm. every every boob, all boobs has something awesome about it. They're just they're just good. All but boobs. You're saying like girls awesome about it. You're saying <laughs> girls aren't obsessed or aren't in, obsessed with that. And I feel like guys in the same way that they're obsessed with boobs. They're obsessed with their dicks, like. I enjoy swinging my dick around way more than she enjoys me swinging my dick around. I know that. I don't think there's any girl that likes the helicopter thing. Yeah. But every guy likes the helicopter thing. Sure. I just think yeah. it's funny. <laughs> you don't, though. I think it's funny, but I'm just like, why, why are you doing this? I'm not like, sit, I'm not like, you don't see me. Oh, yeah. I'm trying to hypnotize, and it's just not working. Maybe I should just get some tassels, and I can do a helicopter. There you, you know? go. I mean, and I would love that. <laughs> I've never tried that. Say? I've never tried that. Maybe I should. Yes. All right. <laughs> All right, all right. That's the end of that combo. Well, <laughs> all right, done. <laughs> Tabled. All yeah. right. Boobs are awesome. Tassels are being ordered. Word. Nick. Maybe. Yes. <laughs> What's your topic? Uh, this came from Twitter. Of course. And I forgot to pull up the person. Yeah, so why do you I do this every time? Find it in a second. But you want me to fill time? It, yeah, go ahead and fill some time. Real hey, quick. everybody. Thanks for watching this or downloading it. Remember, if you want to download the entire show days in advance, you can go every Friday to gameovergreggy.bandcamp.com for one dollar. You get the full MP3, the entire show. We thank you so much for your support. If you say fuck that, you don't deserve our support. We're totally cool with that as well. Go over to YouTube.com/slash gameovergreggy Monday through Friday. We post it topic by topic. I guess when we have five, we'll actually start on Sunday this time, right? Is that yeah, how we do it now? Sunday. Yeah, so we'll mm-hmm. start Sundays and we have five topics and then yeah. the whole show goes live on Friday. But then again, you just go buy the MP3 of the next show that day as well. <gasps> go to districtlines.com slash Game Over Greg. You buy the Oreo, Oreo Gasm shirt I'm wearing. Sean Finnegan like hiking. Uh, there's probably like one Pertillo shirt left. Maybe. There is exactly in, one in, left. In triple XL. Okay, that you all demanded. It. So go fucking buy it, Team Fat. Yeah. Hey, I wore a triple XL shirt last night and this morning. I like triple XL shirts. They're like... Cozy. You got yeah. some explaining to do. Who's got a shirt? You, you just buy triple XL shirts? Oh, no. I got it free from work. But oh, okay. Of good, course you did. The gaming shirt. industry is rife with fucking <laughs> yeah. triple XL shirts. Team fat. So my topic today comes from uh, t- Twitter. And remember, if you have a good topic, please tweet it at me, Nick underscore Scarpino. Not the other one, because he hates your topics. But I I'd like them. to see. I'd love to talk to him about yeah. it. He, he have have him wait, wait, wait there's the two? So there's before, Nick Scarpino and then Nick underscore Scarpino. Right. So before I decided that I was going to be... On air, I was mm-hmm. like, I don't really care about social networks, things like that. Like, I didn't didn't get Facebook, didn't barely got a YouTube channel, which is amazing. But I didn't get Twitter, and some other guy named Nick Scarpino got my. He's just, it's at Nick Scarpino, which is amazing. Which Tim Getty says to this day, he will not let go. He says it's the biggest mistake I've ever made yeah, in my life. It is getting that because the underscore kills it. But this guy's probably gotten like he has to have gotten five hundred or thousand followers because of me. Yeah. At this point. I mean, yeah, exactly. And like, this guy... So they think that he's you. Yeah, they think he's me, and he's better looking than me, and he's taller than me. And he so. works at Google. And he works at Google, so he makes more money than I do. He's basically the better version of me. Yeah, it's awesome. He he's did a the TED child talk. my mom always He did a TED wanted. talk? Did a TED I didn't know. Talk. What was it about? Uh, Being better than this guy? <laughs> yeah, getting to social media before your other yeah. people? Yeah, it was pretty interesting. Um, anyway, long story short, please follow me at Nick underscore Scarpino, and tweet me questions if you have any topics for the show. Uh, like at G- JGC404 says it rolls off the tongue it yeah. really does if you could instantly green light any movie without limits what would it be new ip sequel remake question mark mm. so tim i'm going to give you 200 million dollars oh my god you can I make mean, whatever movie you want to make well so here's the thing 
So I get to make the movie. You get to make the movie. Hmm. Can I hire people to make the movie? Yeah, you got $200 million. You, I hope oh, I guess it's just, true. Yeah, so yeah. we could have someone else do it or me do it. You if could, it's me doing it, I mean, because someone else is now doing this and I am so excited. But right. Power Rangers. Yeah. My God. Yeah. This reboot is going to be the best thing ever. Is it? Oh, it is. This is what you said okay. about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, remember? That's not what I said about that. Yeah. No. You said, no way Michael Bay can fuck this up. And then it came out. This movie, look, I'm excited for this. I'm excited for it. I think too. it's going to be good. Like, it's. People, people are hating and they do look stupid. I wish they didn't have the noses, but like. Whatever. It's gonna be it's gonna be a fun movie. Okay. But Power Rangers. Oh, I've dreamed about this so long. I just want like a, a more mature, more for my generation of where I'm at in my life now. So not mature. But wherever whatever I am right now, that's what I want. Yeah. I want I want that big budget. I want it to feel like Transformers. The looks wise and stuff, not mm-hmm. story. Please God, not story. Effects wise and stuff. But yeah, like effects um, and just like the idea of like I mean in the best world I'd want like a Dark Knight-esque Power Rangers we're not gonna get that no you're it's not gonna get a dark that. pretty story there's no one or over like, Green Ranger who, do, who does uh, Power Rangers who's the studio Saban is yeah it Saban? that's it Saban yeah. That's yeah there's no one over at Saban that's like guys let's get Nolan let's get Nolan and Goyer and let's go after that'd be awesome thing. they did that yeah. they're not gonna do that though but I mean yeah that's that's what I would want I would want to make that it sounds like they're doing that and that's exciting as hell that's, that would, was you, the would you have a Power Ranger with really <laughs> good boobs I, just have like yes. a, a low cut change their outfit. No, don't change one. your outfit. Don't, don't stink no, 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 no. Yeah, I, I don't Come want on. Just keep it clean. No, no I don't want the... In, in your brain with the... That's an interesting question though because what, what do the uniforms look like in Power Rangers, mm-hmm. right? Are they... Are you going to go X-Men? So, okay. Like, so see where they're just full leather? I've thought about this a yeah. lot. I want the whole team... I want them to not all have the same outfit like they always do. Right. I want it to just be the colors very similar style but kind of like how Ninja Turtles in this Michael Bay one did it where they like gave them like things that are unique to their... Like one want, has like a shoulder like, pad I want or the, the Black Ranger to have a cape. Like, and be a cape. like the kind of capey guy. Yeah. Like a big, like a badass cape, not like, like a, a superhero cape. Okay. Why does he need a cape? Like a, the cape's going to get in way of his yeah. Taekwondo. Who gives a shit? He's the Black Ranger. He can like deal with it. All right, cool. And then like uh, <laughs> the Pink Ranger can keep a little skirt thing because that was kind of cool. Um, the tennis skirt. I want the yellow one to be more sleek and like I envision it that she's kind of like the like the, the ninja one. Mm-hmm. Shouldn't so the black one be the ninja one? Yeah. Though? And no. the yellow one be the tennis skirt one? No, no, no. Because I, I and then I want the the red one to be like the, yeah, you know, the leader. So that he's, I mean, you know, what looks gonna, like the leader. You know what they're going to do though? They're going to have like they're going to go X Men where it's like hardcore leather armored looking things with just like touches of the colors in it. No, yeah, yeah. yeah. they're no, going to do that. that because the Power Ranger movie, like the Power Ranger show. They looked, it was just spandex. Yeah. Then the Power Ranger movie, they looked fucking awesome. Yeah. I want that costume so bad. Like, I'm going to get it for you. Do you know what I'm talking about? Do you no. remember how they looked? I don't remember. I don't remember the movie at all. Oh, the Power Ranger movie costumes were like, that's what they should What were they? they? You describe them. They, they were, were just like non spandex versions. Of, oh, okay. They were like armored, right? Yeah. Like they had mm-hmm. actual built out chest piece yeah. armors. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They still had spandex awesome. underneath. But they just had like a badass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, they had like overlay. the football mm-hmm. overlay. I don't know if they thing. even had spandex underneath. It, like it looked like it was on the all internet. Kinda, yeah, they usually wear like Under Armour or something like that underneath it. But it looked as doing it as yeah. a costumer. So that's what I want. All right, I like that. Kara, what about you? I would make a let's see a reunion of all the Disney princesses coming together for some. Wow. You're just doing this no. for him. She doesn't even know about this. Well, thanks for my, watching my, my show. weird infatuation with the Disney princesses. Tim has an insane infatuation. With I Disney have princesses. like five Disney princesses posters in my room at my house. Well, in, no in wonder my you guys are together, psychos. <laughs> so I think that, that would, would be, be really crazy. Oh, I see it. Okay. Like, okay. would they all be bitches to each other, or would they all see, get along? That's the thing. So it's like the Super Smash Bros. of Disney princesses. I'm, I'm in this. Yeah, I'm definitely in this. Yeah. But what would you want it to be? Like, do they need to team up to take down? Ganondorf, some some, some big like that. Ganondorf. That's a great idea. <laughs> yeah, well, that and all of the all of the villains from all of the different Disney movies, and they all basically it's have to game, get like, together. Think about it. Like, so essentially, this is Kingdom Hearts, which I'm. Oh my God! I take back Power Rangers. You did Kingdom, <laughs> Kingdom Hearts. Hearts movie. Yes, this continue. Awesome. continue. I think that's the movie one, not not the new movie, but the movie he was talking about, where oh, they were like it? armored and not spandex. But it would also no, be cool. Kind of. Though. Don't know what I'm Still talking about. Still animation. Not, yeah. not Pixar oh, you, or nothing okay, like that. This is, not this like is 3D, complete this is animated. Yeah, yeah, like kind of like Got classic it. Disney style. So not real life. No, not real not life. Not live action. Got it. No. It's completely anim- animated. Mm-hmm. Um, I would love for them to either have like a fun like Mean Girls type thing. like going. You're to blowing my in, mind right now. This is the best. In, and it would either be like in current day, like in present day right now, how they would do it. Like right. if they would, you know, they would wear outfits that are similar to their costumes that are in the movies or i would want to go more traditional and have them all band together so you think like at first they start off sort of at odds together yes and whatever the thing is whatever the common goal or the big plot point is like 
Maleficent's coming in and she's going to try to put everyone in the world to sleep or whatever. Then they have to put aside their differences and work together. Mm -hmm. And then there's one scene where they're like, damn it, we have to go underwater to get the big MacGuffin thing that's going to save her and they have to go down. And you hear like, it's all about... Under the sea. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Exactly, exactly. That's actually a really, really solid idea. And I'm surprised Disney hasn't done that yet, like more crossover stuff. Disney, don't take my idea. Well, they do. Well, they you, now, well, now you've posted it, so now you get a cut. When we yeah. got a law, when we got a lawsuit, cool mm-hmm. about it. That's how it works. Isn't that's it? not. That's Don't you go to law school with the it works. Works. No. <laughs> But that would be amazing, though. Like uh, it's sort of like uh, what they do with, I guess, Wreck and Ralph. No, I was gonna say more like Wreck and Ralph, where they start taking. But oh, that's not a good example. Well, I mean, Kingdom Hearts literally did this with Disney characters. Yeah, but it's that's a game, not a movie. I know. Yeah, that would be an amazing movie too. Cool, Colin. Oh, what do you think? Uh, I would take your $200 million. I would pretend I was going to make a movie. <laughs> and then I would uh, instead make five more seasons of Jericho. Oh, <laughs> yes. Do they ever get out of the town? Do they ever get out of Jericho? Yeah, they, I mean, they've, they've been out. They've of been Jericho. out. Why don't you catch up? It's on Netflix. I don't like that show. It's a three-way, what? three-way I've civil war. It. I've never you got to watch it. it. It's great. Yeah, All so right. I would bring I back Jericho. I thought Colin was full of shit for a long time until I watched it. When I moved in here, of course, because it was like on the lease mm-hmm. that I signed. I had to watch Jericho. And it was amazing. Really? Yeah. That's beautiful. Come on, back in those Henry. Everybody's Jericho. Let's get out of Jericho. No, let's go back. Major to Dad's in it. Does that make you want to watch it? Major Dad. Yeah, remember Major Dad? No. He's the mayor. You, you don't remember the the show? I keep I keep thinking Major Pain, which was starting. No. Major Pain was amazing. That was an amazing oh film. Yeah. I'm gonna make you guys. What is it, Gerald? Rain. Gerald Mc. I don't remember that guy's name. But but yeah, it's, it's Major Dad. Major you, Dad was a you sitcom wa- in the early nineties. You I remember sh- Major Dad? I just remember the guy in oh. Major Dad. You don't remember? You remember the series, but you don't remember Major Dad. I remember there being a show called Major Dad. Okay. I don't remember who was in it. You oh have to Google God. it for he's, me. He's married to Delta Burke. Does that ring any bells? Yeah, I know Delta, Delta Burke, Burke is designing, designing women. women. He's, in, that show. he's in House of Cards. Yeah, he's um, Kevin he's, Spacey. He's the super rich guy. Elon, like the billionaire. In, in, yeah, with in, the D. Uh, is that right? He's got a D in his name? Maybe. I gotta look this up. I don't know. Gerald McRaney. <laughs> I'm just gonna type in Major Dad. I did too. That's what, how I, how I got to it. What does he look like? What's oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. guy's a badass. Gerald McRaney. Like, what was that quote from Major Payne? It was like, shut up and... Suck it and Shut the fuck up about Major Payne. That's the quote. <laughs> That's a good quote. Major Payne was amazing. I don't know, but I'm gonna look yeah. it up now. Okay. <sighs> was that the one where the kids like? Yeah, that was. That was one where the kids like. There's a monster in my closet, and he like yeah. blows like yeah, five yeah, 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 yeah. Like, if he's in there, he ain't happy. <laughs> <laughs> it was really good. Greg, two hundred mil. Two hundred million. I thought dollars. long and hard about this in the four seconds since yeah. you announced it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and of course, you know, I'm a comic book fan. Yeah. So I immediately jump back to comic books. Yeah. And the problem is that it gets complicated real quick. Yeah. Because I want to say a Smallville movie. However, the Smallville comic book is going, and it's very good. Brian Q. Miller is doing a dynamite job. Everyone go read it. So I don't have to worry about that. Mm-hmm. Then I'm like, I've always thought that Superman, Last Son, uh, a storyline ri- written by Jeff Johns and mm-hmm. Richard Donner, who made the movie, of course, awesome. uh, is an amazing storyline that could be made. But we just had the Superman movie, Man of Steel. It would confuse audience that General Zod is there, and he's not the same General Zod. And I, I would want my own Superman. I wouldn't want to use, uh, what's his face, Cavill. Yeah. So now I'm thinking I want to do probably, arguably, the best comic book miniseries of all time, Kingdom Come. And I oh, say you wow. make Kingdom Come. That way you can have an older Superman. Different, so you can you're, take everyone out. You're you don't se- have to cast anyone. Sorry. You cast whoever you want because it's, it's totally exactly. different. Exactly. You're sort of separating vibe. it. Like that's, I mean, like, I, you know, somebody was talking about this the other day on Twitter, and I think I've said it a few times too, of like, what an amazing time it is to be a nerd right now. The fact that like right. X-Men and Superman and Spider-Man and all these things are happening. But we still have that thing of like, when Man of Steel came out, there were still audiences that weren't sure that it wasn't connected to Superman's mythos. That right, and same thing now with Superman versus ba- or Batman Superman. Right, people are still like, is it related to the Nolan films? And it's like, no, it's its own thing, yeah. and that's hard to express to people. So like, in a perfect world, I want to get to the point where uh, you just understand that not even ha- it's not even a question, right? Because that's right now the thing with comics is there's so many different miniseries and storylines and this, that, and the other that you understand that none of it's fucking connected, right? Like this is what we always talk about with continuity being a problem when you're talking about like well, what's Joker's backstory? It's like well, it's a million different things. But for Kingdom Come, a standalone movie covering that entire spectrum, I think would be amazing, especially with all that money. Get some good name statue, get some good graphics in there. That's what mm-hmm. they call that, right? Yeah. Do you think we'll ever get that? Computer graphics. <laughs> yeah, I think we will. You think like Kingdom Come? Like, do you I think, think we get that... to a point where like we've done all of the the like stories we've done as many reboots as possible where someone's finally like fuck it we're gonna give people what they want yeah because I think that right now we're in an, an amazing uh, era of of movies where they are like look what they're doing with Star Wars right yeah where they've got the main three movies but now they're doing one off movies and it's not inconceivable that if they find a series like a Justice League series that's gonna be a hit that they can't then take it back and go hey we're gonna reimagine this for just one movie sure. it's super marketable we're gonna take 
three f- huge stars and yeah. cast them as Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman, and that's going to be the Kingdom Come story, and we're just going to tell this thing. Like, well, same like, thing with, I think they could do the Dark Knight Returns as well. See, that's what I'm talking about. Like, it, 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 we're in this part right now where, like, nerds rule the earth and we get to do it. We're, we're you know, we're finally doing all these movies, all this stuff, but the really crazy, fucking crazy exciting thing would be in 10 or 15 years, like, to, like right now you get could totally do, yeah, do, do Dark Knight Returns with Michael Keaton. Imagine if you did Dark Knight oh Returns with Michael Keaton. And you say it's not even connected to the Tim Burton movies, but we're giving you... And like yeah. People would understand that, I think. But yeah, more conceivable is 15 years from now, Dark Knight Returns, Christian amazing. Bale, this, you know. And if you did Kingdom Come Now, right, you could theoretically get Linda Carter to be Wonder Woman uh-huh. and do all these different things. But see, here, oh my here's my thing. Do we need... It, when, when we get to the point where the general public, where Superman is such... Almost oversaturated, right? Superman! Superman! Where we don't need to see him... His origin stories over and over and over again. Right. Well, we yeah. think we'll reach a point. I think we will, and here's why: because Superman, even the Man of Steel, made money. It wasn't it wasn't yeah. the best movie ever made, but it made its money back, and uh-huh. it's still gonna they're gonna make more as they make more and more of those. I my hope is that they'll do what they do with the Wolverine, which is one off cool story that doesn't really need to be in canon, mm-hmm. but could just be really fun and reimagined, and then we can eventually have multiple. Uh, sort of like we're seeing with uh, Quicksilver, right? Where we have two different oh, Quicksilvers. Right, right. No one really cares. The guy, Evan a Peters. A lot of people care. A lot of people are confused as shit. Uh, I mean, but Evan Peters was amazing, right? Mm-hmm. I could see a story Yeah, that's of him the problem for the guy in the Avengers. <laughs> well, Aaron Taylor Johnson's got Godzilla, so he'll, he'll be okay, I think. They'll, they'll, they'll sure, I'm just saying. Those with him. Wait, he was the guy from Godzilla? He was the main character. What's Godzilla. really weird is yeah. the main character Godzilla is him and his and wife. His wife in the story. Is and Scarlet Godzilla Witch. is Scarlet Witch. Okay. So the Olsen girl was in, they were in both. Apparently sure. someone was like, we like these guys. Plug them right back up over here. But that's what I'm saying is like, it's it's confusing, sure, a little bit, but it wouldn't be with Superman, right? Because that's See, Quicksilver, a guy my that's like, who's Quicksilver? is Spider-Man. Know. Like, we, why do we need a reboot of the trilogy right. telling the, the, the origin stories again? My fear is that every 10 years, we're just going to reset and just keep doing well, it. I think well, you, that's I'm, because new generations come in that don't I know. know the whole story. That's true. Yeah, but, but I think we'll get point, away from If you that. keep doing it over and over and over again, it's mm-hmm. not inconceivable that you could take Zack Schneider, or not Zack Schneider, like, take Darren Aronofsky and be like, you're going to do The Dark Knight, right? He was the one that was supposed to originally do The Wolverine. It was supposed mm-hmm. to be super dark, super gritty, and a hard R. And they were like, no, you can't do that. But if they're making all their money, then they can take that chance, right? A hard R Wolverine. I, awesome. see, I hope we get to a point that we can get a hard R comic book movie. Well, we will, but, but there has to be the foundation of... 30 PG-13 teen movies out there and then maybe they'll take that chance of going like let's put this out similar to what they're doing with com- with com- uh, comedies right now right mm-hmm. like 21 Jump Street we're starting to see the return of the R comedy oh is it R this time I or believe- was yeah. the last one R I too? think the last one was R oh. Yeah. I watched it last night not as good as some people say. Twenty twenty one. Yeah, you didn't like it. I liked, I, it. I liked it fine, but it was it was like oh that was fine, but it wasn't that, like amazing. No, it's but yeah, but all, it's, it's got to be all right because all the Seth Rogen films, all that stuff, like mm-hmm. knocked up, all those things are R, right. and that's fantastic. And so eventually, the will hopefully have that saturation point where people will be like, okay, we can make money off of yeah. the hard R comic mm-hmm. book movie because people will go see it because er, people are going to realize eventually that. The majority of people seeing these movies are probably kids and, and thirty-five. And, old, and yeah, older yeah, yeah. people yeah, that have grown up you know. around it, yeah. Um, but I think that would be amazing. So your your Kingdom Come is, is Kingdom what I'm Come. doing. Yeah. I would have thought you would have said Invincible. I've thought about it too, but that like the problem is that Invincible, and I know we're not there, would be a much better TV series. Yeah, it would be. You awesome know what I mean? Because it's, it's there's so much in that first story that you're gonna bore the audience. I feel like if you try to shove that all into two hours, yeah. right? Like because it would literally be. Well, I think you would do the like, first ten minutes. He gets powers. 15 to 20 later a whole bunch of shit happens and then we're into this like and it's like <laughs> no, that kind of that sucks that's, that's awesome yeah. exactly it's stu- but that's the thing you could do you could do so it could be like seven movies and I would watch it sure but I mean like that's the whole problem is if the first see, if the first movie the first movie's cliffhanger has to be the son we have to talk when he turns yeah. around you know what I mean and like that no I feel like that needs to be the midpoint and then it needs to build up to uh, okay that. you're better at movies than me so. it would be really really good um, <laughs> that's it well actually as a side note I just thought of a great movie for Colin <laughs> So if you didn't, if you wanted to take just a hundred million of that and go do the Bane story, <laughs> I think that you would be the perfect person to helm that project. A lot of questions about Bane, isn't there? I mean, a lot of un- unanswered questions. I don't know anything about, about Bane. Why is he so fucking stupid? Why does he dominate so much? <laughs> For instance, why is he so great? We got Scarecrow in there too. Why no, is no one Scarecrow. No one Scarecrow. Um, well, you know, like we said on the last episode of this show, we'll we'll Nolanize Mister Freeze. We'll Nolanize. That would be Riddler. awesome. And uh, we'll get, you know, we'll see the visions of these of these interesting enemies as well. Quick si- aside here. Yeah. How are you feeling? And I know you don't care about superheroes, but you no. like what they did with Nolan. They, I, they, love the, I love Batman. That's it. So how do you feel about the Gotham TV series? Are you at all interested? It's cool that uh, I saw a commercial for it. And it's, it's cool that there's like young Poison Ivy and yeah. young Riddler in it or whatever. Mm-hmm. I, I still don't. 
I still think that like the, the superhero shit's getting out of control. The shit's about the rubber band hard in the next couple of years. That's what they've and been saying forever. Just like zombies. They haven't been saying that forever because Greg, we've already went over the zombies thing. Zombies are no one wants that shit anymore. Unless you're gonna do it cleverly. Everyone wants it. That's still. not true. Walking Dead is still huge. Unless unless you're gonna do it cleverly, Walking Dead is is critically getting getting wor- worse from what I've been reading. No, it, it rebounded this season after the mid season break. It got awesome. But uh, I mean, I stopped watching because it's fucking stupid. But the the you know the thing with with these particular superhero movies is eventually there's a saturation point, and so you and a lot a lot of these movies are still bad from what I understand. So like you know, eventually the market's gonna gonna rebound and say we don't want this shit anymore just like we don't want reboots and we want we want new ideas you know to say like people have wanted this forever is silly because there haven't been there, the influx of superhero movies started five years ago we had like no we had like x-men hitting like 2000 but that was but greg there wasn't like there wasn't dc and marvel weren't firing on all cylinders releasing fucking movies that set up new movies that set up a trilogy right. that set up the, i mean that wasn't well, I mean, happening x-men did and spider-man did like now it's definitely the next level but like in 2000 the Spider-Man trilogy, X-Men trilogy, those did have universes. But those are those are Marvel movies, and yeah. the, and so it wasn't even it didn't even interest DC. Well, I mean, we're hit, and we had and we had like the third party kind of shit going on with Spawn in the '90s and stuff. But like, Spawn you know, was but like, so but like, amazing. But like, you know, Batman was the shit. You know, when it came back in '89 ish. That's all it was. That's and all then it was. and that was it. You yeah, know, and that it. was cool, and that made you like, even though those movies sucked after the second one, like the. You know, you wanted, you were waiting and anticipating 100%. these. Now it's like every other thing is like, what's going to be at the ending? That's so, going to yeah. tease this new shitty character in this new shitty movie that and we I, have to go see. I'm sort of with Colin on this, right? Where I do believe that we're we are quickly approaching a saturation point, and that point is going to probably tip over when we hit Star Wars. Star Wars is going to be the the final drop in the bucket that just collapses. So what everything. what does that mean? That it after just Star means, Wars, everything has a lower opening and it's just going to taper off potentially. And there might be just, the, I mean, I don't know, I don't know. I when, think. Because Star, they're going to do a Star Wars movie every year. It's just going to be right. Booked. I mean, it's crazy. Like the last couple of weeks, I've seen a movie every single week. That's big. And, yeah, and that's insane. Like I don't remember a summer like this for a long time. No. And I don't see that stopping. And I think Star Wars is going to add to that because there's yeah. going to be comic book movies, Star Wars, and Maleficent sequels. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, so. Batman v Superman opens on Captain America Three's Day, right? Isn't that the deal? It's like I'm yeah. seeing so, Batman v it's Superman. It's so yeah, me too. It's just so stupid. Like. Why won't like we have this awesome nerdy high fantasy or, or science fiction like that is of a, a high quality, right? Like something like Game of Thrones or the Nolan Batman movies, which are way better than any other superhero movies I've ever seen. You know? Like yeah. why wouldn't we just want to be more patient and the studios be more patient and be like, let's make good stuff. Well, you know, but as, they opposed are to, like, good as opposed to like as opposed but like a lot of the stuff from what I I mean, I won't see any of these movies anymore because I don't give a fuck, but like especially the Marvel stuff, I don't care. But like, you know, I, I mean, from what I'm understanding is that people are like, this Thank isn't you. that good. Like, some of these are good. Like, us. Avengers was good. Yeah. But, like, a lot of people are like, you know, and I think that Captain America was probably pretty good, too. Yeah. But I think that, like, there's, like, some shit in there, too. I'm, I'm telling you, once this once the saturation point hits, it's going to be too late because a lot of these games are, or a lot of these movies are going to be in production already. Yeah. And these well, studios and we'll are going to fucking that. take a hit, man. Oh, they And that's what hey, always uh, happens, like, right? That always happens. Every, there's, studios and movies over. are cyclical, mm-hmm. right? You find out one studio is doing a Western, all of a sudden every studio's got to do a Western, yeah. right? Because it kind of builds into that thing. We are, it's just kind of, there is a chaos factor in what we're dealing with right now because every week there's no in order to have the highs we have to have the lows right now there's no lows so everything's starting to be like how do you discern between what's better mm-hmm. arguably they make X-Men I think X-Men's probably one of the best comic book movies to ever come out I think the last one was Greg's disappointed but he hasn't seen it because it doesn't come to his TV right into his TV no I went and saw it and that's what broke me on the movies <laughs> that was it that was it um, but that's the problem, right? Is if we had an X Men and then nothing else for six months, it would probably be better just by virtue of it. Being I think the only that you're getting more and more mixed opinions because there are more. There's more to judge it against. Well, it used to be so easy to be like Superman the movie is the best, or Superman two is the best superhero it's movie, the and then all this other stuff starts tumbling out, and you have all these questions. And so, like, this is what it comes down to for me with you, Moriarty, is that you need to shut up. You know what I mean? You don't you don't enjoy the the material in general, and you're not seeing the movie, so I don't feel like like I don't think you have a an idea of when the bottom's going to drop out of but this But I've one. seen, I've seen a You've lot seen, of them. You have, but I mean, you're talking about right now that like people are pissed about, or not not pissed, but they're not happy with the current crop, right? And it's like, well, yeah, Thor and Captain America do not live up to the Avengers, but they're still enjoyable movies. And I, and I mean, this is again, even though it's not my universe, right? Like I'm not a Marvel guy. This is what I've wanted forever is a is a is a structure that can support that to say we're going to put out these giant movies. I mean, how fucking crazy would it have been to talk to little Greg Miller? two decades ago and talk awesome. like there's gonna be a Justice League movie and that you're gonna have movies on top of that about everyone I've been like go fuck yourself no way <laughs> and I would've taken a drag off my cigarette they'd be like you're 11 years old don't smoke and then I would've been like this oh, stay away from chicken wings you <laughs> thanks me but no, I will agree later. with Colin and the fact that uh, I think the zombie 
the whole zombie idea and that those movies are kind of a little bit oversaturated now. And I think the audiences are kind of getting a little, you know, they're, they've been around for a while. And, you know, how many more zombie movies can you make that are that different? I mean, I just watched Warm Bodies. Have you guys seen this I movie? I saw Warm Bodies. I seen it. Uh-uh. I wanted to watch it. I liked it. it. I saw it again last night. It's cute. It's a yeah. fun take on the zombie film. So I think I'm, I'm in support of anyone that can bring... Uh, another dimension or another right. sort of right. angle in zombie I mean. films mm-hmm. or do it really 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 mm-hmm. well like uh, Dawn of the Dead the Dawn of the Dead remake mm-hmm. was like, which I thought was freaking awesome if See, five, it, if this is a, a good point if I don't I'm sorry I'll let you talk in one second but otherwise fuck off yes. it, <laughs> the zombie movie is a, is, is a genre that's easier to burn out on and I think that's why you're not seeing movies I think Walking Dead Love It or Hate It is doing it well on TV mm-hmm. and comics so you let that go right because in a movie you can't reset every time this is what we're talking about If in, in so to apply that to comics if in five, ten years, we're rebooting Spider-Man again, and we have to fucking see him get bit by the radio after Spider. Then yes, that's when there'll be a whole this already go fuck twice, yourself. Though in the decade, like, but this, it hasn't stopped. This, but this is this is what I'm saying. Like, there's just a, a, a intellectual and creative just deficit in Hollywood, and this is when, and this is true. like one of the, the this is one of the reasons why I just don't give a shit about movies. I don't go to movies and don't watch them. I just don't care. Yeah, like all of the creativity is on TV and that's or in true. books and like. You know, uh, when I, I tweeted about it the other day, like, they're rebooting Cliffhanger? Are you fucking kidding oh me? God, like, yes. why would you... Like, this is what it's gotten to now? Like, okay, we, Total here's, Recall, here's I can understand. Or going back and rebooting Terminator, that's cool. Sure. Like, yeah. doing all that kind of stuff. But, like, now we are so devoid of ideas that that all it is is, like, tired-ass romantic comedies uh, and reboots of fucking marginal movies from the 80s and 90s and fucking... Endless amounts of superhero movies, and it's like enough, dude. Like, but where see, are the, the fucking new ideas? See, the only thing is, like, I, the only reason why I really, really appreciate the superhero movies is because they all make money, and when the studios make money, they are more likely to allow a few experiments to happen, mm-hmm. right? Like, you'll get a few. Let's take a chance on this. When you've got Harry Potter coming out, you know you can fund like two or three more films because you know Harry Potter is mm-hmm. going to be a big deal. Um, Depends on what you do with the money. That's not always true. I mean, we talk about that in gaming. You have the Activision model and you have the Ubisoft model. And the Activision model says, like, a game that you you annualize things and you make money. And there are we make the money to keep the money. And there is no room for experiments. And this Ubisoft model says we have some big shit and we make things like Child of Light because we're allowed to. We make money. I wouldn't. I don't see the the studios taking a lot of huge risks with with some of the movies they're making up based on the commercial. I'm not reading. Fucking variety every day or whatever. The, no, you know, but like I'm not. saying, like, but I'm saying, like, <laughs> he's out on the porch with that green visor. But, but, just like reading but I'm saying, like, the commercials and the trailers I see, like, they're all just tired rehashes of the same ideas, you know. And I think I think Days of Future Past was a great example of like continuing without rebooting. And like, granted, they did reboot a bit, so they have more room now to fuck around with the next X Men. But that's a different thing. type of reboot. Exactly. I'm exactly. talking about the like. I'm totally this is with you. Really different. Yeah. And like, here's the thing I think is interesting too to talk about. Right, you're talking about like where are the new ideas. When's the last time you went out and saw an original IP movie, an independent movie, something like that? I don't know. The last the, nothing has intrigued me enough to go to a theater. To I see think it. that's the problem. Is like, there's it's hard getting those asses in the seats to go see mm-hmm. her. Like, I wanted to see her, right? And I never got around to it, so I watched it on the plane, which doesn't count. I mean, I'm totally just a big blockbuster movie type of guy. I don't really like like the, like the video store with VHS. Exactly, huge fan. <laughs> Love blockbuster. Um, but like, I'm not going to go watch something I don't know about. Like, I only am going to watch comic book movies or Disney movies or sure. stuff that I'm like, I know I'm going to like. This. Right. Um, but then a perfect example is Inception, where <laughs> like because that was the last. That was probably the last one. Yeah. I was just like, was original. I would have never seen Idea. Inception besides the fact that I'm like Nolan made this. I trust him from Dark Knight. And this you love Ellen cool. Page. I love this heterosexual Ellen Page. Yeah, huge we didn't fan. know back then. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That, I mean, that, that was a fantastic. That was a fantastic mm-hmm. movie. Yeah, yeah it was Nolan. Great. You know, great. Just got any, that JGL in it too. And yeah. I like the whole thing. Didn't they? They didn't think that movie was going to do well, and they, to get it made, they all took points right after, like on the back end of the movie. Like they I actually know, didn't get probably, paid up front. Probably, as far as I understand, and then they ended up making like a shit ton of money. Instead of saying taking like I'll do the movie for ten million dollars, like I'll take five percent of the ticket sales. I'm glad to see Leonardo oh, finally God, get some money. Yeah, uh, no one gets it. Because, because, yeah, they, right. because they believe because they believed in it. But he needs it so bad. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, I Leo just, was on. Yeah, he was dying. He was really just like I got nothing, guys. I these growing pains. Well, I say well, <laughs> you no know more basketball diaries. Did y'all see Texas damned. Buyers Club? That, I, that was I haven't seen it. Was really good. But that's the whole thing again. Like that's a movie I've heard great things about. I just haven't gotten off my foot. Well, I mean, there's first of all, they're making plenty of amazing movies. Like like Dallas Buyers Club is a perfect example of like. It's it's a powerful, powerful film, and it's not powerful for the sake of like being preachy. It is mm-hmm. just really, really, really filmmaking at its best. That's filmmaking at it, its, it's best. Really That's not a movie. Good. All right, let's, let's separate the difference between X Men: Days of Future Past is a blockbuster popcorn movie. You mm-hmm. go see it. Dallas Buyers Club is something that really makes you think about how you react and mm-hmm. how you deal with things in life, and 
how to be a better person um, or what you would do in that situation, which case I'd probably crumble. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think that there's, you guys just don't, see as many movies as I do. There's, right. there's still plenty of phenomenal films being I'm made. I'm sure there like is, that. but but I, I I wouldn't say that there no there's no filmmakers out there or studios making good movies. Right. I'm not gonna pay fifteen dollars to see a movie anymore, so that's like that's gone, especially with a fucking high utility cost of just getting T V in here and I'd rather watch that stuff. But you know I, like it's like we talked about in the last episode, like the the good storytelling is not in movies. It is all TV. And, it's true. And and, and I want does. and I want like I want we we're so spoiled now because whether it's Downton Abbey or whether it's Mad Men or True whether Detective. it's like True Detective or fucking Game of Thrones, these are like these are real store like meaty. You like wait years, and to that's see why the that's, I, I like mean, that kind of thing. That's exciting for me too. Is like being able to see that because because the the actual physical capturing of it, the pro the production of it is not very different now. Like from a movie to TV, mm-hmm. right? They're starting to the dollars are starting to come to TV because a lot more people are, are mm-hmm. switching over there and. The, the you know the invent or the advent of rather of digital photography and digital motion picture capture has really sort of even, even the playing field you can get mm-hmm. the same look on a 20 like the true detective was filmed on a camera called the alexa as was all the avengers movies all the marvel movies everything's filmed on the same camera so you're getting cinematic a cinematic experience you're starting to bring in the dps and things like that that's what we film the show on right it, yeah, absolutely <laughs> this is absolutely a, a $85,000 body alone camera um but you know, and it's and it's starting to work. It's starting to to attract major celebrities and really big talent, and that's freaking awesome, right? Game of Thrones, things like that, House Breaking of Cards, Bad. and True Detective was really the first thing in my mind that was like, holy crap, we are on the precipice of an awesome era of TV. Because they get it. I think it's in the same way what Colin's talking about, what I've talked about before with TV, right? Is the fact that. At, when it all comes down to it, they're actors and performers, and they want to go tell an awesome story. And, they and you understand. The audience is. You look at McConaughey, right, and all the shitty fucking goddamn movies he's been in that are just terrible. Ghosts of Girlfriends Pass. I watched that one the other day. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Sahara, God. like all these horrible movies that are like you know. In, in, okay, what, Sahara. What's was the not one? What's horrible. the one I'm thinking of? Fools with Gold. Goldie Hawn's daughter. Fools Fools Gold. No. Ten, yeah, how Fools that was. That was. They did. They I actually Baker. watched that the other day, which that was on TV. I watched. And good for him getting paid, but it's nice to also see him be like. I don't want to just get paid. <laughs> I want to do good shit. And he Which, talked about that too. He talked about when he when he did Dallas Buyers Club. He it was mm-hmm. it was a, a a very distinct like decision. He's like I don't want to do How to Lose a Guy in Ten Days, mm-hmm. which is the one you were talking about. Yeah, I, 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 I gave you credit. Okay. I gave you credit. Smash. Um, but yeah, you know he, they realize that the audiences are on TV, and you know hopefully one day all going online. We should all cross our fingers on that one. Come um, join us, McConaughey I'd love for McConaughey. <laughs> I'd love to recast him as McConaughey. Yeah. Just take Tim out of it and have him. And the pure one, Tim. Matthew all right, McConaughey. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. right, all right, all right. <laughs> you can play the character he played in uh, True Detective. It'd be awesome. Just be awesome. make he's like just, cut up his. I was beer gonna cans. say he's cutting up beer cans while he talks. So staring it's, into that little weird freaking mirror that he had. You remember that? Where he's just like, I can only see my eye. What a weird thing. That's so cool. <laughs> so sorry to wrap this up because this one I think is going long. Yeah, um, but it's been good. It has been really good. Mm-hmm. Uh, and thank you for the question, GS84. GS84! GS84! It's the one, it's, I apologize, it's the one time I did not write his name down. Usually I just say the person's name. But thanks for the question. Uh, if I could remake a movie, if I had that money. Oh God, you haven't gone yet? I haven't gone yet. I'll just go very quickly. There's a movie franchise that I loved when I was a kid. And it's a franchise I love very similar to the reason why you're talking is because it's, it has the ability to bring every character together potentially in one movie any of the characters you've ever loved especially characters in racing oh damn it. I, I was movie. really hoping you're gonna say monster squad because that'd be a great no movie monster too. squad is uh freaking amazing as well but no there's a little series that i think they made about three movies that have called the cannonball run and the cannonball <laughs> run <laughs> the cannonball run was so amazing Wait, because explain you... i have no idea what this was is. okay don deloise no i guess we're too Bert the cannonball reynolds run. sally Fields, I ask you, is there a better cast on this planet? <laughs> All right, you win, you win. So the Cannibal Run, it's, awesome. it's, a, it's a very simple concept. Mm-hmm. The Cannibal Run is a race that goes cross country. And it's an illegal race, and whoever wins it gets a cash prize. So it's like a rat race. It's very much like Rat Race. But, Please do not compare it to Rat Race. But it's but what they did with this movie was they race. cast every big celebrity they could find to do cameos. And it's like Dean Martin's in this, Sammy Davis Jr., Farrah Fawcett's in it, uh, Don so Delevation. it is like Rat Race. It's it was I, I think I can't remember which one. Came John first. Lovitz <laughs> is no Dean Martin, sir. <laughs> um, I think it was very similar to the ideas, but back in the day, it was about the movie's vibe is has. It wasn't about the race. It was about the party that was happening during the race, right? So they would all stop and like party, and then they'd see someone run. Like, oh shit, Jackie Chan's in this movie. Yeah. Like, it's old school. Awesome. Jackie but Chan's in it. 
I don't remember that. Yeah, he was the Japanese. They were the Japanese team, even though Jackie Chan is Chinese, which is super racist. Um, <laughs> but he was like, "We'll, play, we'll be the Japanese <laughs> you team." Fuck, you just want to get paid. The and they had team. they had a badass like car that was like stealth. So like, and then there was obvious there was a car that was like the Lamborghini, which is two smoking hot girls. And every time they got pulled over, and you get pulled over, you get like arrested. So that was part of the fun. Was everyone knew this race was happening, so the cops went look out, and you had to figure out how to get. Mm. To Sounds like Atlantic awesome. City. We're watching it after this. You went from like Atlantic. <laughs> I think it was from like Jersey or Atlantic City to like to California. I can't remember where the route. I thought was. it was the other way around. I thought oh, you went it might from have been California. The other way. I think Jersey. it was West Coast, East Coast, okay. and it ended. And then you wanted the, the wind. Then, you wanted the wind at your back. You wanted the wind at your back, and <laughs> but it was awesome because Don DeLuise and Burt Reynolds were the main characters, right? Their car was the main thing, and they decided to do an ambulance because who the hell's going to stop an ambulance, right? It's genius. You're going cross country, and they their big nemesis, the guys they were really racing against, was Sammy Davis Jr. and D. Martin, who were priests in a Ferrari. Oh my god! <laughs> like, who's gonna pull over if you pull over a Ferrari, and all of a sudden there's priests in there? You're gonna so oh, it's father, you can go. Seen that shit in a long time. It's so good, it is. and but the brilliance of this was like every scene had like one of them was Roger Moore was a character, and he was only in it for like five minutes. But every time they cut back to him, he was playing Bond. Yeah, he just didn't say it was Bond. He was playing Roger yeah. Moore, and there was oh, a new girl. So cool. There was a new girl in the car with him. Right? So, <laughs> and he, every time she got pissed off, he like ejected her. Right? Because it was kind of silly. And then in the middle if of the only movie, every guy could have that. Like an hour into the movie, the tra- a train goes by, and all the the cannonballers, as they call them, like converge upon this town, and yeah. bi- and they get in a huge fight with bikers, and they band together to beat the shit out of these bikers, and then it's everyone for themselves to go on. This is it's eerily amazing. similar to Rat Race. I'm, like, I'm sure that Rat Race one, is probably just like the shitty. I'm remake. sure that one. I was gonna say yes. Them. Rat Race ripped them off. Yeah, 100 yeah. percent. Rat Race is similar to this. <laughs> this is Rat not Rat similar to Rat Race. So <laughs> if I were to do it, I would probably I would cast every star that wanted to be a part of it, and you make it a big cultural get that Jessica Biel in there. You get Jessica Biel. You get the you get the you get the Justin Timberlake. You try to get Dom as Dom from Fast and Furious to be one of the characters. Yeah. yeah, it would just be the most amazing thing. Can so Smash Mouth so much All Star? And by the way, at the end of the cards. movie, no matter who wins, like they literally have a race where like someone wins, and you're like, oh no, whatever, that person won, that's awesome, and then they don't give a shit anymore. They just party. Yeah. It's just about the party. It's such an amazing. We fun. should just do this. We should do that and film it. Yeah, okay. just like with it. us. I mean, you're okay. and not a movie. Honest. We just race across the country. Yeah, that'd be fine. From here, in my Honda. From here to Glen Ellen to Long Island <laughs> <laughs> to the eastern tip of Montauk, Long Island. <laughs> <laughs> that would be <laughs> But yeah, that's one of those I'd always I've always wanted to see a remake of that because it's that's such, an a, awesome it's idea. such a fun film that you could just plug. I mean, that's you a great just idea. put it out Not there. Not the shitbag like, Rat Race. There was a remake. No, it was amazing. It is not the same. Whoopi Goldberg so was in Rat Race. No, yeah, Mr. Bean. Yeah. No, but see, Rat Dean Race. Dean Kane, Amy Rat Smart. Race. Yeah. <laughs> Rat Race, I think, was a remake of Rat Race. I think there was a Rat Race in the in the early '80s. Either that or it's okay. Mad, so there's an original Rat Race, the Cannonball Run. Was a reboot. No, Cannonball yeah. Run was before original. Cannonball Rat Race. was late seventies. We yeah. gotta look this up. But I think there was a movie. No, there, there's a lot. There was a lot of movies like that. There was like it's a mad, 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 mad world, which was like about a race around the world, like to and you had to. Do like, oh yeah. There was oh, all the Alvin and the Chipmunk movie. That's they did that too. Very similar, I guess. I haven't seen that one. They Not. they raced the female chipmunks. <laughs> there you go. Chipettes. So anyway, Chibettes, that's yeah. that's the movie I would remake that one and potentially. Fight. That's a great fucking choice, Colin. Yeah. What's your topic? So, I'll talk to y'all today about. Something that's been grinding my gears. Yeah. Grinding yeah. gears. Gear Something gear. that's been grinding my gears. That shit's grinding family my gears. Family Guy? No. No? Okay. That's a good, it's a Family Guy reference. That's you're citing, yes. All right. Oh, yeah, yeah. She is. Oh, no, oh, no, oh, yeah. oh, no, I understand that. I was just I was answering sardonically. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I thought you were, I thought she, you were answering if she was saying, is Family Guy grinding your gears? I don't Can know. we talk about what a great yeah. fucking show this is? We're having fun, aren't we? Yeah, <laughs> this is a good one. I, I'm glad I woke up I want to talk about or, internet... Oh. Was all day until I came here at night. Yeah. By the way, Nick said that that he was really tired when he came to here today, and I was I was uh, asking him if he you know had a late night, and he said he went to bed at eight, eight at night, <laughs> eight. He had a rough day yesterday, but an eight rough day. Yeah, it was a, it was I had to get that MRI, uh, and I had to take a anti anxiety medication, which I never take. I don't like taking pills because I don't know what they're gonna do to me. And this thing like just knocked you out, knocked me out. Like I was watching the Lego Movie, and I'm like, this movie's pretty. <laughs> <laughs> so I gotta go back and watch the rest of it today. Good, it's gonna be a good day. Anyway, it's a good movie. Uh, so I want to talk a little bit about internet shit talk Ooh. and internet tough guys, Ooh. tough guys, tough guys on the internet. Mm. Um, Leave a comment below on this video. So we, you know, I have this, I have this philosophical kind of feeling about internet comments and internet tough guys and and how they, this small minority of loud people or cowardly people, overshadow really great people on the internet mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. And, and solid conversation. That we often make excuses that it's just the internet and this is the way people are on the internet. It doesn't have to be that way. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that, and Greg and I always talk about this, one of the things that I like to do is to search for my name. I do this a lot, like a few times a week. 
And I, 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 I did I too, to... but I just typed nude afterwards that, to see what yeah, comes up. With a plus nude. The next yeah. Scarpino in quotes and then plus no, nude. No, <laughs> call more. already comma <laughs> nude. <laughs> underscore. Uh, comma, underscore, comma. Um, but, uh, you know, what really bothers me is that, you know, and I, I it, something happened on Twitter today that, that was the catalyst for this conversation was, I'm just sick of people having something to say but not having the balls to just say it to you. And we have, like, different ways that you can communicate with people, whether it's by email or you know, especially on Twitter. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when I, you know, Greg and I have often talked about this in the past, and I think we talked about this on the show, that we've tried to, like, level and calm down our own criticisms of random things and be a little more positive because yeah. um, we know in a small way what it's like to be ridiculed for everything, yeah. you know? And, um, you know, what bothers me is that you know, when I search for my name, some people are saying nice things about me, and I really appreciate that. A lot of people just talk shit, though, and especially on Twitter, it's like you can just tweet at me and tell me how you feel and have some balls in your fucking pants mm -hmm. to, like, say what you need to say to me, you know? But why doesn't anyone ever do that, you know? And the people that do do it do it in, like, really combative ways that make you just want to block them. In other words, nothing's constructive, right. you know? And... You know, Greg and I, it's funny, on Podcast Beyond for years, we've, I've often Beyond. said, I'm still waiting Beyond. for someone at some show I go to to talk shit to my face, you, you it? know? And it doesn't happen because the, the the anonymous nature of the internet has given people, you know, a brazen nature that doesn't parlay when you even confront them on the internet, you know? Yeah. And I talked to some guy today who said some snarky thing about me, and it wasn't the worst thing in the world, but I know that this guy has said shit about me in the past, or people have brought this guy up to me before, and, you know, they, they like to talk about you in circles or whatever. And I confronted him about it, and I was like, you know, have some balls and say it to me. Like, you, you have some courage and, and stop being so passive aggressive and just say what you need to say, you know? And he's like, Jesus, it's just a joke. And I'm like, but it's not a fucking joke. You know what right. I mean? Like, why don't you just, if you have a problem, just say it. So I'm kind of curious how you guys feel about, about this, this culture, this internet culture that drowns out the positivity and kind of brings you down with the negativity because, you know, you can't, you have to like actually search for the things that people are saying about you because they don't even have the courage to say it to your digital face or at we're at a comic con or something in your face they'll, they'll they'll treat you nicely and be friends with you but right. never say things to your face and so i'm kind of curious how you guys feel about that i feel like i get a lot of hate to me well Maybe yeah it's just me it's your hip-hop hands it's probably the hip -hop. and it's also I mean, that you have yeah, great yeah, posture and you're stuff. pretty yeah a lot of a lot of things yeah, about that. and i'm not that wasn't sarcasm i mean that's why but, right well, sarcasm I, mean, I don't think that's sarcasm <laughs> That wasn't sarcasm. It's it's <laughs> one in the afternoon. I've had about four Knob Creek. Why are you getting <laughs> Why are you getting shitballed on Knob Creek right now? What are you getting about the rest of your day? You That's what I do. Saturday, I got to edit the Oreo oration after this. You're like, <laughs> it's just gonna be sloppy. And film it. <laughs> Oreos um, go great with bourbon, apparently. I just respond to everything with positivity, though, and it's yeah. like that that might not be the best way to do it, but like I feel it is, and it usually like ninety nine percent of the time just makes the situation better. And well, go sure, away. they always say I'm sorry. I didn't think you read it. The problem I always talk about with this, and I've talk to Colin we've done this for years now is the fact that no one thinks no I don't know how many people watching this or consuming our content understand how human we are in that this none of this pays the bills we aren't you know what I mean like this is, we aren't going out with Ferraris and doing all this crazy shit at night we're normal people you're who not. come I'm, are you all where's all the money going what no it's that you're normal people the, the example That's I me getting away my I have hundreds of examples I've given but the freshest one happened recently at MomoCon where I came off stage I signed autographs I took photos with people I talked to people right and at this one point this husband and wife come up to me take a photo with me they're talking to me husband's telling me what a great you know how what a fan of the show he is in and he's like, I've even got my wife to start watching your content. And the wife goes, yeah, I love Oreoration. I'm like, that's awesome. Thank you so much. But she's like, I even watched Game Over Greggy's show now. And I'm like, that's great. Thank you so much. She's like, I hate Colin. And and I'm like, what? Do you do you fun hate Colin? Like, oh, God. Again with this, you know, he hates fucking comic book movies because he's stupid. Or do you like hate Colin? And she's like, no, he just annoys me. And they're like, all right, thanks. And they walk away. And I, and I went back to the room with Christine and I was like, it blows my mind that people are, that the screen is such a divider that mm -hmm. people can't understand. He's my best fucking friend. Go fuck yourself. Like, it, like, flip it around. And I walked up to you and I'm a stranger. I was like, hey, Tim, I fucking hate Alfredo. Yeah. Like, go sh fuck off. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, and like, it's that, and they're not making their own, you know, content. If they are making their own content online, I'm sure, you know, they're obviously not as popular. As, well, it's as not even is. a numbers game, something. right? It's just the fact you get right. so insulated from what reality is that the fact that I'm a human being who loves this man and mm -hmm. just fucking loves all of this action going on here. You know what I mean? <laughs> and so, 
Like, and it, it, it was one of those things that happened so fast, they left. There was other people there. I'm not going to make a scene and go, you know, do blah, blah, blah. But then the, the, the Monday after MomoCon, that woman tweeted, hey, MomoCon was, gr-, I'm paraphrasing, MomoCon was great. I got to meet at Game Over Greggy and tell him that I hate at no taxation. And Colin responded in his t- typical Colin jovial way of just like, I'm sure he really appreciated that. And this, <laughs> and this is happening while we're apart. And I responded back, like, no, I was actually insulted by this. Like, this wasn't like someone jokingly yeah. saying they hated him. You know what I mean? And like, blah, blah. And of course, I made the mistake of responding to Colin's tweet because I didn't mean mm. for this to happen. Uh, I made the mistake of responding to Colin's tweet instead of her tweet. So then everybody who follows Colin and follows me then got to respond uh, too. And nobody, uh, to the credit of all of our fans out there, nobody was like, oh, yeah, go fuck yourself. Blah, blah. Yeah, it was yeah. like, that's a fucked up thing to say. Yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. And she responded at some, I checked it later in the day, and she responded with something along the lines of uh, like, I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. And you're like, how would you not mean that? You know what yeah. I mean? And then she deleted her Twitter account, which I felt bad about. That wasn't the point. I don't, see ya. I know. But I mean, th- this is the whole thing of like, <laughs> teaching by example of that we are just like you we are just normal people hanging out with their friends making content mm-hmm. doing these things and it's easy to get lost in that and the example i always talk about when i know this is a tired story for fans i'm sorry is when i was watching the office season the the season before they finished mm-hmm. and i started a tweet that was like at nbc needs to take at the office out back and shoot it and christine looked at it and she's like huh, that's true this is terrible and then i deleted it and she's like why are you deleting it? i'm like because this is what people say to us yeah it's the same thing i you know i mean you think of you're on tv you're getting paid thousands of dollars you don't give a fuck but there's a person who tried really hard to make that and it didn't work it's the same way with this show right you don't like this show awesome i'm sorry you know I, watch I, it if you don't there's like plenty it, of people you know? who yeah. do like it so go mm-hmm. go off and do whatever you want to do that's cool but don't come and talk shit to us about it sorry party yeah. punching really hard and, uh, i don't know like you know i want to be there's t- I, i'm of two minds you know like one is like stop looking for it and stop you know trying to like kind of nip it in the bud but the other part of me is like i don't want people to get away with it you know what mm-hmm. i mean like because i don't treat people like that yeah you know yeah. literally the only people i tweet snarkily about are barack obama <laughs> and anyone that works for him <laughs> because they're politicians <laughs> because they're politicians right mm-hmm. and i don't give a fuck about them mm-hmm. you know like if you're a politician you, this is your job and you're fucking everything up i'm gonna call you out on it because it affects me directly. It's affecting you directly yeah exactly yes. yeah Otherwise, so that's just not that's not snark for snark's sake no it's that's snark because, because that's, like there's this many people out of work that, yeah, yeah exactly that's what i care about like i even told the story about like i used to tweet about mark sanchez all the time yeah. right because i'm a huge jets fan and eventually i was like this i got a copy kind, there did you i'm like this is kind of mean yeah. you know like like He's trying. Yeah. Certainly New York is the most difficult place to play in the entire country because the media is fucking crazy. I'm, I doubt this dude needs to check his Twitter account and find that everyone... I don't need to contribute to the inevitable hate that he gets every time he throws an interception or whatever. Yeah, you know? yeah. Like, And I was trying to... So I was starting to think about that in, in those kinds of terms. And then it's like, you know, I was talking to a friend of mine this past Ramon. week. Ramon. Not Ramon. 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 We have to say Ramon every show. Yeah. I'm sorry. And we were, we were, I was talking to him about, you know, we were talking about Far Cry 4 and like my response to it and how I was kind of, you know, I wrote an editorial that was very well received about, you know, art doesn't need to be sensitive and we're get, everything's overblown. And we, we, we ended up getting into a conversation about my unique position on the internet in that, and, and I'm talking specifically about me, in that I'm in a very liberal city and a very liberal industry surrounded by very liberal people and I don't care. You know, that yeah. like I still say what I want to say. I would have like, I've lost tens of thousands of Twitter followers over the last few years because of the things I say. And I don't care because that's the way, that's who I am. I'm not here to contribute to the echo chamber. I'm here to challenge your views and challenge your viewpoint. And if you respect that, you do. And if you don't, that's fine. And I appreciate that. There are certainly plenty of reasons you can be mad at me. And that's great. What I don't understand is when people judge you simply for the things that you believe in. You know what I mean? We talked about this with the Mozilla CEO the other day, right? Mm-hmm. Or the other week. And what I notice when I search for my name and, and, and look at the Twitter echo chamber of the same 50 people talking to each other and congratulating them, uh, themselves on everything that they say is that they attack you. They're like, he's just a libertarian. He's a Republican. He's an asshole. He doesn't understand anything. It's like, you don't know me, you know, and you don't, you, that, that, that's unfair, you know, like, yeah. and so even though I'm of two minds where like you should ignore it and let it go, it's at the same time, it's like, I want to let you know that that's not okay because I'm not right. going to do that to other people. Right. And so. I'm kind of caught in the middle. I, mean, I don't, you know, that's kind of where I am. Yeah, see, that, that's interesting to me because recently um, there was some guy tweeted at me and just said faggot. Now, I hate that word completely. Yeah, yeah if you're in San Francisco and you say that word, you should really exactly. move so, somewhere so else. So this guy says yeah. it and I just replied to him and I was like, you know, hey, dude, sorry you feel that way. You know, that, and that was it. You know, and I just like try to keep positive. And Did you block immediate- him immediately? See, that's what you got to do. No, so I didn't. I, I mean- give it a window where I say something back to you. Usually, oh, you're cute when they say something horrible to me. 
leave it a window so they see it and then block them. Well, I forgot exactly what I said, but I, I wasn't saying it in a sure, sarcastic sure, sure. way. It was like, a, dude, sorry, you know, like... There's a di- yeah, whatever you thought. I didn't I mean talk. for you to feel that way. And then he immediately responds. He's like, "Oh my god, I, I didn't think you would see that. Like, oh, I'm such a big fan. I'm like, so why sorry. Why did you whatever. not think I would and see that? It's my yeah. Twitter account. So it's weird. It, it made me think. Like, did he just say that just to like just, to get just his his so I would see it? And then it's like that sucks. Like, and it, then I gave him a response. And now yeah. he's now he's positive. Now he's good. Like, you know, he immediately like then it was like four tweets. This is what like, I talked about in that uh, on this channel of the 365 thanks thing, right? Of like people, I, I make up examples sometimes of trolls, right? Of and call them out to light a day and and like not like that girl, but like people who are like call, uh, and saying horrible words and whatever. And I make them, you know, Wait, hey, are you, this are you holding the, the Green Lantern lantern in front of people? No, right this now? is hot. <laughs> when I think of calling out a troll, I grab them and show. Oh, like, hey, uh, like, uh, this guy with a daughter and, as his banner picture just called me a fat faggot and blah blah right. blah. You know what I mean? I'm like, this is not acceptable. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I get point. But so many people have told me like, you're don't don't do that because there's thousands of tweets that you get that we want a positive response to and you don't give it to. But this one guy who gets under your skin for mm-hmm. that second of being a fucking hypocrite and a coward is the one that gets your energy, and that's true. And I try not to do that, but I still do it to let people know that this isn't acceptable. Somebody has to say that. That's what you're the same thing you're yeah, saying. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Like when I wrote that Far Cry Four piece. I got a lot of like a ton of congratulations and, mm-hmm. and thank yous from a lot of great people, and I thanked I thanked as many as I could individually. And then I tweeted out like I really appreciate. It. I'm seeing your I'm seeing your positive feedback, and I really appreciate that. Then you search for like the negative stuff, and it's always and it's always just the same. It's it's literally in the game industry the same fifty people. I was talking to my friend about this. I'm like, go look for something someone said negative about the Far Cry Four tweet. Then look at their ads and start clicking around, and you will find yourself back at the same place in ten minutes. You right. know what I mean? Because it's it's literally an echo chamber. And when I was trying to explain to him, and I think I gave him some interesting perspective, and he certainly gave me some interesting perspective on his on his viewpoint was, you know, I'm not one of these guys that writes things that you necessarily want to hear. You know, like it could be easy to be that kind of person. There are that kind of people in this industry and in every industry that will like they know how to get the people going for them. And like, and 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 to me, it's like I am used to having everything I say challenged every day. You know, and so it's an, a unique position because I'm always on the defensive. I'm always kind of on my heels because it's like. You know, I know I have to say what I have to say. It's my job to say what I'm going to say. I'm not going to lie to your face. I got to tell you how I feel. But I'm used to having everything I throw out there challenged and put under scrutiny. And there's a lot of people that don't. So when something challenges their viewpoint in their echo chamber, they flip the fuck out. But see, and then they start that. judging you on all these things that are on the periphery that really have nothing to do with your yourself, your character. You know what I mean? And that's what I want people to judge me on is my my character. Well, I think yeah. I mean let, let's look at the term that like you're asking you're asking people on Twitter to follow you, right? And so I I'm think, not asking them to follow. Well, what I'm saying is the term, the ter- they use the term follower for a reason, right? I mean, it's not, they could have said subscriber, someone could have subscribed to you, but it's different. You are giving someone when they follow you the promise that you're going, they're going to be following you and what you believe in. And I think the, the, the more you can focus on that, ultimately, the more true you can be to yourself, the more beneficial it is for anyone that, that wants to be around you or wants to listen to what you have to say, right? And so you talk about these people who are sort of the, the more mainstream who don't really have those polarizing opinions and like that's their thing but the thing I respect about you most is that you do have an opinion it is your opinion it is uniquely your opinion most of the time um, and I would follow you if I were of your mind and I would trust that you would give me that opinion no matter what right and I think that there's not a lot of that going on either on the internet where I think a lot of people realize hey I know what sells I'm just going to give people what sells and I don't really care about the feedback because I don't really care about the content either, right? Whereas you are like 100%, this is you, this is my voice. And I think ultimately that sucks for you because then you're more, <laughs> you're more, uh, you know, a little bit more, uh, I guess, hurt by the by the transparency of the feedback when it comes through. But ultimately also, you know, I think most people just enjoy it. I think a lot of people just like the anonymity and that's their mm-hmm. thing. And they sure. don't really even give a shit about what they're talking but about. But it's also the thing I always talk about with trolls, right? Is just the fact that they have to live there in their terrible job that they hate and they think they know more about games comics whatever you're talking about than you do but they get to see you doing it and living and traveling the world and talking and having michael rosenbaum in your house and doing all these things that they will never get to do not to mention half of them are probably you know half of your age you know or you know a lot younger where they just don't really exactly (laughs) i mean care how bad is it for you i mean you are you're a public facing figure you're a girl which mm-hmm. i know is the, or a woman i don't I, i'd call everybody boys and girls to be clear because no, i love boys he calls me girl and girls are all hey, right girl. Like, hey girl. girl but i mean like, I, you know, it's one of those things anytime i feel like a woman in our industry speaks up of i love this game. fucking fake gamer get out of here 
personally, I mean, I personally don't respond to a lot of things that I disagree with because I think everybody's entitled to their own opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, so for myself, I just, if I tweet at someone, you know, it's a thank you. I appreciate that. I don't get a whole lot of um, negative comments tweeted at me, but I do read some YouTube comments of videos I've been in oh, yeah. that, you know, are negative that will say, you know, oh, Kara's ugly or Kara's fat or something like that, but, or she's annoying. However, so how, there's... How, how easy was it to get over that? For me, there's a lot, I read that, but there's also so many, there's positive mm. comments as well that you can take. And that's yeah. what comes back to the whole opinion thing. Everyone's going to have their own opinion. So, you know, if someone wants to be rude, you know, go ahead and be rude. If that makes you happier and that makes your day better to, you know, try to put me down, then all right. But, you know, at the end of the day, I'm the one doing the show. I'm on it. I'm working really hard. Yeah. And there's a lot of people that really enjoy it. And that's where I get the tweets from are people that enjoy the hard work that goes into it mm-hmm. and everything that you do. So that's what we come back to, right? That there's the vocal minority who hates mm-hmm. what you do. But especially like when we talk about IGN, right? Like there, you look at an article and there's 12 negative comments out of 300 comments. And then mm-hmm. you go in the back end out of whatever, 50,000, 100,000 views. And it's like, you are statistically insignificant if you mm-hmm. want to sit there and hate me. You know what I mean? And But that's the part that sucks the most is like that small number you doesn't remember. mean it means so much less than the good stuff, mm-hmm. but you care about it yeah. so much more just because we're humans. I mean, I don't mm-hmm. know. I can't speak for everybody, but like I know for me, it's like I can read 10 comments that are like, oh my God, this is so good. Thank you for this. This is awesome. And that'll make me feel so good. And like, I appreciate that so much. And then mm-hmm. I'll, I'll read the one thing. And I'm like, I don't even fucking agree with you. You're an idiot. And yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah. did you watch this? Did you watch the video I did? How could you even say this? And then I'm like, why do I care so much about this one? Right. But mm-hmm. I don't even think I'll ever get over that. Yeah, I, no, hard. you will. You will. Because really? that, yeah, mm-hmm. I'm totally over it. Like, it's like, That's it's a rare occasion where somebody says something to me and it actually gets me. The troll calling them out is me mainly being like, hey, everyone who fucking loves me, mm-hmm. guess what? This guy's a hypocrite and he sucks. You know what I mean? And it's the same way. I, I made a guest spot this week or last week or two weeks ago, whenever this post, on movie feuds where I talked about X2 versus uh, the new X Men, Days of Future Past. And I took the X2 side. The host, Adam, took the side of Days of Future Past. And all the comments like, Beyond, oh, so cool you got Greg. Yeah, and one guy's like, do people even like Greg Miller? Blah, blah, blah. And I, I forget, I, I responded like I always do to hateful comments on YouTube. Where I'm like, yeah, I hate him so much. Yeah. I subscribe to him on Twitter and YouTube just so I can keep up on everything. Because like I know my numbers. You know what I mean? I know how many people enjoy our content and care about us and want to see us do more. So it's like, at that point, fuck these, one, you know, these one-offs. They're, like, they're just jealous. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? To me, it's, yeah, I, I agree with all that. I mean, I'm more with Tim where, like, it still stings me. I mean, I've been mm-hmm. doing this for a long time. Like, it, it's still, yeah, like you said, we're human. You know what I mean? Like, I've never been above saying, like, I'm not like Greg where I'm like, it, it rolls off my back. Like, I'm not sure that it does, you know, because, and it's not the personal nature of the attacks or whatever. It's just, like, why does it have to be like this? It's more like that. Like, why why don't you want to be challenged? Why don't you want other opinions out there? Why why can't you understand that it's vapid to like want to be reinforced instead mm-hmm. of challenged, you know? I mean, that's a great point. I'm sorry, real quick. That's that's what I never understand about you is that people who don't like you, but like oh, I agree with him on PlayStation, but I don't like his political views. You, know, you agree with him on something. So you understand he's intelligent. Why wouldn't you follow him? Like you you always talk about you watch MSNBC. You don't agree with that slant, but you want to know what the other yeah, side I thinks. How, I know how I feel. Yeah, I don't, exactly. need, I don't need someone to tell me how I feel. You know, like that's why mm-hmm. so I don't watch Fox News. You know, it's like, okay, I'm sure that they're going to say things that are, you know, mm-hmm. that are great for Republicans or whatever. It's like, that's fine. I want to see what other people are saying mm-hmm. and challenge my views. That's why I have an ex- incredible amount of respect for like Rachel Maddow and a lot of people on MSNBC. They're fucking smart. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't agree with, I don't agree with it. She's a fucking Rhodes Scholar. I'm not going to like mm-hmm. talk shit about her. She doesn't say things I agree with, but she certainly challenges me and people have certainly changed my opinion. And maybe it's just a matter of being open-minded and I'm not trying to say that it's like other people aren't necessarily open-minded. It's just that I want my opinions challenged. People have changed my opinions on a lot of things in the past, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I've done it once and, on a blue moon. You know, and it makes me feel really good. And it's and it's like because I, I feel like I'm intellectually honest. And so anyway, it's just I, I want people, you know, to understand that there's human beings on the other side of things that they say. But also, if you have something to say, say it. You know, just say it to me. I, I, but like, but like, and say it to me. Don't say Colin Moriarty is this. Tweet at me. Maybe we can have a dialogue or a conversation. And but, and, and, but and, and it can be, be constructive. constructive. Exactly. Yeah. Like, dude, I've made mistakes in my like in, in, in my past. I made mistakes in my career. I've said things that I shouldn't have said. I've, you know, held opinions that were unpopular that maybe I would change now, mm-hmm. you know, or rethink the way I put them out there. Certainly, I've done things that are Stress notorious on the internet for sure, you know, and like that volleyball video, like that, that vo- <laughs> yeah, that volleyball. But at the same time, like, you know, yeah, I make predictions that are wrong sometimes. I, you know, all those kinds of things. I'm, I'm human. I, I always tell people, I'm like, I'm gonna make a mistake today, you know, like I'm a human being. Like that's the way it's gonna be. But 
by con being constructive, you can actually change the way I look at things. By yelling at me and screaming at me, you're going to make me more volatile and make me angry. You know, and, and, yeah. and that's the way, that's like, that's the kind of stuff I just don't understand why you want to push people's buttons and stuff like that when we can actually ro make the internet better. I'm again, I think, excuses uh, I about think the uh, again, I think it, for me, it boils back down to it is easier to be negative and feel like yep. it's gratifying and be a part of mm -hmm. something than it is to actually do that thing or be supportive like for a lot mm -hmm. of people i agree it might it might it may or may not be a jealousy thing but you are still a part of it if you're putting a polarizing thing out there right so if someone says on on this episode oh my god you know nick you're the worst thing on, on the planet i'm gonna see that it's gonna Scumbag. somehow affect <laughs> it's usually Greg. Greg, by the way, is the worst. Scumbag is good. Time. You're our scumbag. We I, love you, just, you scummy scum. No one <laughs> thinks that's a compliment at this table. Even Portillo is look at he's put off by it. Look at him, he's dead almost. Um but that's the thing. I think it is. That's that's some people's way of feeling like they're a part of it. Right. This is what I was talking and about it's just with a Yelp, negative right? Way. It's, it's, a, it's a negative way because yeah. people are going to notice the negative more so than the exactly. positive. Like we had talked about, you know, the twelve negative comments that will yeah. be negative, but there'll be a lot of positive comments. But I mean, even so, for me. Even seeing the negatives, that does still affect me. Yeah. Even though I try to roll over, they get over to you. It, they they get they pierce that veil of. Like I will that, remember all of the negative the comments a lot more than right. I will the positive comments. I mean, that's very uh, true. Colin actually. keeps bringing up this thing of like challenging and like like critique and stuff, and that's so true. It's like when I look at the negatives, like there's a lot of times when I'll look at stuff and I'm like, oh, you you're right. Like maybe I should stop doing this. Yeah. Or yeah. Maybe I'll, I could mm -hmm. do this better. And then there's other stuff that I'm like that some people would take as a negative thing, and I'm just like. They're just making an observation. I don't know why they're saying it. Like, for example, when I'm in videos on IGN, yeah. my hands move a lot. Hip-hop hands. Hip -hop I got the hip-hop hands. hands. It happens. But it's like, you know, those, there'll be some people, oh, why are you, like, like, why do you think you're a fucking rapper? I'm like, you're an idiot. Yeah. You know? Did I but say I, I was a totally rapper? Totally put that aside. Mm -hmm. But then there's other guys that are just like, oh, if you mute it, it looks like it's a rap video. That's not a negative comment. Sorry sure. about that. That's yeah. just an that observation. Was, that was my comment. Sorry about that. I think that. that's funny. But I mean, you know Is what I mean? Really it's just yours? like, no, I'm that's okay. one of those things where I'll take it and just be like, Okay, that's not a negative. It's just a thing. Yeah. I Another, say, mm -hmm. I, I've been called out by our positive fans that I say in both this, sh everything I do, every video I do, I say it's one of those things. And it's true. I, I, It's one of those things where I do say that all the time. And I never thought of that. And so people started pointing out, you say that all the time. You're like, I do. And that's, that, that seeing as how many people listen to this as an audio thing, that's annoying. I will try not to do that as much. To limit myself mm -hmm. to one. See, that's what it's one yeah. of those is things. Is it annoying or is it just an observation? See, that's me like with my hair. Like I'm a girl and I have like the bangs. So I can constantly sort of just like try to trying to get it out of my face a little bit. Everyone's like, why are you messing with your hair so much? I'm messing with your hair. I'm like, is that really a well, that's see, for people, observation? That's the thing, though, that, like, if people are watching it and enough, like uh -huh. there are, you know, when you when you start dealing with talent, you start working with talent, you can take a step back. Like, Tim, you know, you're a producer at IGN. Mm -hmm. You work with talent a lot. You have to give that feedback to people of like, hey, this is just my opinion. Yeah. But because we work together, because I, you've, you should value it, hey, maybe don't touch your hair when you're on camera because it could be. And it, and it is, by mm -hmm. the way, when, when you it's see. It's distracting. Like, there's, uh, from my perspective, when Seth. Uh, Seth oh, MacFarlane uh, hosted the Academy Awards, right? One of the things that I noticed was he was so nervous, he was constantly doing this. He mm -hmm. was constantly shifting his weight. And it put, it made me nervous to watch him. Mm -hmm. Like, at any point, he was going to mess up, and it put me on edge. And so as a performer, as someone that's in camera, you're, you're or, you know, in front of camera, your job is to is to make it as easy as possible for people to consume whatever it is that's going to come mm -hmm. out of your mouth, whatever content that you want to give to them, right? And so for Greg, yeah, when enough people notice that, that is probably feedback you should take yeah. to heart. Mm -hmm. Because someone's it's noticing a crush. Going, it's going, hey, clearly FYI. A crush, right? For me, when we first started doing the show, I got a number of comments, very positive comments, that were like, Nick, you're really funny, that's awesome, but you have to stop interrupting people because it's annoying and it's not fair to them. And so to the vast majority of our audience, who, by the way, you know, love Colin, love Greg, and love you, it's disrespectful for me to be like, no, my opinion's more important than theirs. And that's very valid feedback that I have taken to heart. But it is sort of, it does sting a little bit to know mm -hmm. that you're not perfect. But that's how we get better, right? Yeah. right exactly. But that's a lot Why different. Why do we than fall, some... Master Bruce? <laughs> so that we can learn how to get back up again up out of the well, so which doesn't make any sense. You probably just wouldn't want to fall and begin with when you're Batman. Talk shit, Nick. Talk shit. You want me to talk shit? <laughs> Did you notice the movie, the Bam. series began in a well and ended in a well? Thank you. I think oh, wow. it ended in a oh well, as in. <laughs> <laughs> I guess there's that movie. <laughs> that was good. All right, guys. Good stuff. My topic oh, goodness. is probably short. Mm -hmm. And it's just, let's talk about going commando. Oh. The, I've never done it until yesterday and today. Wait. 
Okay, why first off, why? Why? Yeah, why? Why? Why did you? Have if to you're do not, this? if you're watch, well, I okay. So if you're not, if you're not one of these cool kids who watched the Friends back in the day, which is what d- debuted this with Ross and Rachel. Yes. Going commando is not wearing any underwear. You're just wearing your pants or whatever you're wearing. Why did I go commando out of underwear? Oh, you laundry. It was yeah. this is a I was waiting for my laundry to get picked up on Friday. Thursday was the last pair. Friday I was like, well. You don't want, no to, you you didn't, want to go you bathing suit? Oh, I'm not going to double down. I'm not going to wear a bathing You're suit. You're not going to flip on. it inside out and wear the. That's the same. disgusting as well. Right, no. it out there I just want to try it. Every, uh, it's not like it's not. You know, it's not like it's it's taboo for sure. But it's not something that's it's completely. Not, I don't unheard think it's of. taboo. I think it's just. I think it's liberating. Sure. Did you? Is find it not liberating? like annoying? Like, do you not have like your jeans like rubbing up against it? And like, see, this was my concern. Of course, I have metal teeth in front of in front of my penis in my in my pants. And mm-hmm. so there was concern, of course, would they rub Otherwise up against it? Otherwise known as a zipper. Yeah, yeah. of course. Really? Yeah. 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 No, I'm not like... It's metal spice. It's metal control. <laughs> this isn't Teeth 2. Yeah. God, you wear those fucking oh, choppers. God. Why are they automated? Did you see the movie Teeth? Oh, you like, gosh, sorry. Like, I did see the movie Teeth, actually. I like that movie. The movie freaked me out. It of was course, a little yeah. weird. It's really, that one in Hard Candy it's, were like... It's a little weird that a girl has teeth in her vagina. Yeah, yeah it's a lot weird. That's a lot weird movie. It was odd. The, Don't cry. Sorry. It's okay. No, I don't know. My contact just started. Messing it's okay. Up. No, sorry. I know. Commando is a touchy subject. <laughs> she thought about your penis, and then it instantly was brought to tears. Yeah, by it. that's what most people do. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but yeah, that was a concern. No, my dick has not rubbed up against these teeth. Wait, are you currently doing it right now? I am right now. Because the laundry this came. Is awesome. The laundry came after I was dressed today. So, so. I'm 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 a millimeter so, uh, closer to, to greatness yeah, right now. Yeah, is yeah, what yeah. you're telling me. And that was the thing. I forgot all about the episode where Kramer starts going commando. I'm out there and I'm loving every minute of it. <laughs> so wait, you tell us what what are your what are you feeling right now? I'm fine with it, but I'm gonna I'm gonna you're wear gonna underwear buy. tomorrow. And you wear tidy whities though, right? Or no, no, I wear I wear boxer briefs. briefs. See, I wear boxers. What's the difference between? Oh, I guess just the longerness. Well, longerness boxer briefs boxer like briefs. aren't like they're tight. Like short. Yeah, briefs are like tidy whities and boxer briefs go down. Okay, that's they're why. Tighter I than okay. boxers they're like briefs. Superman's underwear like in all the gotcha. Superman. Yeah. So well, bo- I know boxers are loose. I know boxer briefs. I just didn't know about the. There's multiple. There's also like European boxer briefs that are like Fran smaller. Fran, that Fran probably wears. Yeah. Actually, I know he wears those because he, he wears them to the beach, which yeah. is ridiculous. He looks fantastic in them, which is I'm so jealous. He's a good looking man. About man thong. Good looking. The mankini or the man thong yeah, or the what the banana or like the spaghetti. banana hammock. Banana hammock. The banana hammock. Yeah. I My, I'm gonna tell you right now. Has I'm anyone bo- ever tried that actually, yeah. real quick? Oh no, no, no I, don't the the ball, I don't have the balls to try that. Oh. 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 I'm gonna blow, up, I'm gonna blow up my dad right now and say that in, in the late '80s and early '90s, Dad's, he would wear a speedo. My dad wore the speedo all the time. He didn't There's, give a flying. Really? Fuck. My dad still wears that. Under, he still wears the, <laughs> the speedo underwear, where like you look at him, you're like, all right, it's all out there. So one one of my stories that I swear I told before on the show, but there was one Christmas that my mom bought me and my my little brother's best friend thongs for Christmas, like as a joke, male oh, thongs, okay, like okay, the okay, pouches, okay. and like she was like, ah, this is funny, like and you, know, you went to put the, them the on, and you came out, like this is no freaking joke, mom. Please so tell me we went, put them on. Oh, are you guys kidding me? Of course. Yeah. So we went to uh to, we went to Santa Cruz in the the summer that mm-hmm. summer, um uh, as like a, a family trip, and his my friend came, and we brought he brought the thongs. He's like Tim. We're doing this. Your mom's out there somewhere. Please tell me it was Kevin. Them. Was it Kevin the friend? No, it was my friend True. Okay. True. And, uh, his name's True. Oh, nice. that's a sweet name. That's awesome. So T-R-U-E. we went out in these thongs. Yeah, and we this was the, with the handy cam. My little brother on the... On the I would spell it T-R-E-U-X. Like with an X, like like a French True. Oh, That'd yeah. That'd be amazing. Just shut up. Yeah. Nobody cares about T-R-U. Let this story happen. With like an umlaut. So we, we walked around Santa Cruz for like a couple hours just in thongs. Trying and to it, find your mom? Yeah. Okay. And it, it was just awesome because we were just doing it, and like all of a sudden, people start walking up to us and putting dollars in our thing, and then it turned <gasps> real. And then we're just like, I was like, I was 15, I think he was 13, and we're just like doing this shit, and like all of a sudden we started getting money. We're like, we can get money from this, so we went to the beach, and then we like there was this old like Latin man, lady. please. Don't, no. Okay, good. <laughs> well, <laughs> I was worried because I'm saying y'all are 13 and 15 Yo, walking around and honestly, I'm sure they're it was right. a pretty bad like, situation. pedophile. So like this guys, old, it was know? like a, a old. Latin grandma's birthday and she was so into it and like she just like, came yeah, like, come over here come over so well, like, creepy. Yeah. so we went over and we sexy. were just like talking to him and stuff and then all of a sudden the beach patrol comes up mm-hmm. in their little in a truck on the beach we're like, yeah Uh-oh. they were all hard and this guy's like hey guys you can't be uh, you're panhandling and we're like what he's like yeah you, you can't panhandle I'm like wait what if we don't ask for the money because we were at that point we were asking for money and like if you don't ask for it and they just give it to you that's fine but also no gyrations and I was like Damn! Like that really. Like, how are we gonna ask? How are we supposed to get it? So, while we're doing this, True is up on the um on his truck. How am I never met True? I don't know. You and True would it'd be the worst. I want to know True. So he starts stretching on the truck. He's like, "Yeah, is, is stretching okay? Is this <gasps> oh okay? Like, what's the limit? How? What counts as gyration? Is this too fast? 
and like doing all this stuff. And then it was an adventure. We down. went on the boardwalk. <laughs> they beat him with a baton. And now, now yeah. she was serving 13 to 20. Yeah. 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 And we went to uh, the tattoo, like the little like henna tattoo thing. And he just straight up walks up to the girl. He's like, hey, can I get a kiss on my ass? She's like, what? He like turns around. He's like, give me some lips. I want lips on my butt cheeks. And so we used the money to buy that. <laughs> then we went to the arcade and played DDR. We made a lot of friends that day. It Wait, was a, you played it was DDR a, in the thongs? In the thongs, yes. So now the beauty of this, there was a video of all of this on the <laughs> internet. The Great what? Santa Cruz Thong Adventure. Oh my Google God. it. Well, we can just link it, can't we? Is it on YouTube? I... My channel was taken down that it was on. <laughs> it, there's a MySpace video of this. All right, find it and we'll put it in the description. It's good. But this is the usual thing where I say you have to remember that because I'll forget it. Yeah. So I feel like the, the commando... Would... Wait, sorry, real quick. I just okay. want to say... Yeah. My first five hundred thousand views. That was my first viral wow. video. Wow! Wow! Yeah, that also counts as porn. I want you to know that, no that, that no counts porn. as porn. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Thirteen-year-old boy is gyrating. <laughs> yeah, at, that's uh, why they took it down. That's yeah. probably why they took it down. <laughs> exactly. They're like, hmm, this is child pornography. Yeah. But I guess it doesn't matter if you make it. Whatever. Uh, my only concern with the commando would be that. So I tend to wear my jeans for like three to like a three to five days, maybe depending on the activity, and they're like you know they're jeans. So I'm like I can get a few days out of this. Yeah. I would worry that. The commando might decrease 100%. the longevity of the jeans. Time out, real quick, too. Three to five. How many? How how many days do you wear your jeans? Uh, usually for like a work weekend, I'll, I'll get rid of them. Okay. I'll do in two to three days, probably. I don't really have, have a lot. Really? I don't play by games. But by the way, I they say go forever. Eventually, it just builds up. I'm like, I've sat on a lot of muni seats with if these. Yeah, my thing awesome. is. That's almost like wearing the, the second same I curve. smell jeans because you know dirty yeah. jeans. Yeah, 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 or it has yeah, that yeah, sheen yeah. of like yeah. brown on it. If, like, I, if I, I get out of that. touch it and I'm like, oh, this feels nasty, or if I smell, I'm like, I'm done. I usually do a work week as well. Okay. Yeah. By the way, I, I just as a quick aside to this particular topic you're talking about, I was reading something with Tommy Hilfiger and, this and a few other guys this where they're saying like you should never wash your jeans. Just don't wash your jeans at yeah. all. And really? the, yeah. head of, the head of and, Levi said that he's like, I've never washed these jeans. Yeah. Like that's they say they say you can put them in a freezer to like to like kill whatever's on them or whatever but like that a lot of jean manufacturers say like just don't wash your jeans there's no reason to wash your jeans that's gross wow that's weird yeah. so if that's like high school that'd be bad that'd be like wearing the same pair of underwear for like yeah days. so that's my problem is that yeah. you're collecting all of the, sh- the, the schmutz that's that of course grundle, the concern the here of course is when you get the mud butt yeah oh yeah, yeah, swamp yeah, butt's the worst yeah you can't be swamp you can't butt. be having the, any poops and you get thing. swamp butt a lot in this city because you get flash heat where you're like oh it's so cold i'm gonna like I'm gonna bundle up, and then all of a sudden it's yeah. super hot, and you're like, "I'm sweating, and I'm getting the swamp butt." Yeah, it's not good. <laughs> Sorry. So, do, do you I do commando ever? But is I did. I, I did commando really, for I a while. Get an idea. Yeah. It's, 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 yeah, swamp butt's the worst. Uh, I did. I did commando a little bit. I think in college, where I was okay. like, "I'm gonna try this. This is cool. It is liberating." But there are those concerns, right? Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. the the underwear is there for a reason. It is supposed to serve as a buffer between the skin uh-huh. and whatever the harsh material on the outside is. Um, I, I, my, uh, sort of, uh, way I got around it was just by doing boxers. Cause I didn't like briefs. I was like, briefs are too constricting. Yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. You know? And then every, all the girls, of course, like boxer briefs. They like to see guys in boxer briefs. Oh, that's so cute. Boxer briefs. You run around. like, a hey, little model. I've said this in many, many, many times, but boxer briefs are the yoga pants for men. For men. They are. Oh, I haven't it's heard. I don't know. Have I heard that on the show? Yeah. Well, I like that. My we've wife. talked about yoga pants enough, but I'm right. pretty sure. Okay. Said okay. It. My wife bought me a bunch of boxer briefs when we moved in together. That She's Michael like, Kors? Uh, no, they were. I think that's they what were, I wear. Send them for me for free. Boom. I need more. Clearly, I think they were just <laughs> Gap or Ka- or Calvin Klein, and she was uh, she was like, "Oh, you look so cute," and I was like, "I think you look cute." And I'm like, "I think personally," and this is a very intimate thing I'm about to share with you all. So I'm glad we're all super best friends, Kara. Five is best that, friends around this table. Five best friends around this best table. Five is that I don't like that it accentuates the muffin top because the mm. boxer briefs they suck everything in just a little bit. And they let everything kind of tumble out on top of it. Whereas the boxers tend to be a little bit more loose. And by the end of the day, when you when you kind of are just walking around in the boxers, you get that cool, like they kind of sag a little bit. And it shows a little bit of the V that you didn't know you had. And you're like, boom, I'm a little I bit I do scared. not know that V. <laughs> <laughs> Colin knows the V. Colin's had the V before. Um, so yeah, Colin's I, never. Oh, maybe when he played that hockey. That sounds like a disease. He's had the V before. The v. Wow. Got the V. <laughs> but yeah, that was my thing. Is I, I like my, you know... I liked the freedom of the commando. Yeah. But I found that now in the boxer. And the only thing my wife doesn't like about the boxer, she goes, you look, it's too military. You look like you belong in like what? Vietnam, like walking around in this boxer. Really? Like boxers. boxers just aren't very flattering for guys. You look like you're wearing shorts. I mean, you look like a little kid. That's my You look like a little kid. Maybe that's, maybe that's what she used to say. What? I wear, no, kids I wear, are, when I was a kid, I wore the whitey t- tidy whitey. T- sorry. Oh, I wore like those kid, I mean, high school. Yeah, yeah. But I, I started wearing... Ghosts! <laughs> I started in middle school wearing, uh, wearing boxers and I've never gone back really because... First of all, it's just it's not possible for these boxer briefs to contain 
the Italian the package girth. that the Ruggiero yeah. family gave me. Yeah. Um, and at the same time, and then it gets uncomfortable, and then you're constantly like, you kind of have it's to like, shift it's around. Like, it's, and it's, it's like, like, like I need Portillo to breathe, Saran wrap, right? Like, he's just not going to, he's going to fight his way out. Eventually. I got to breathe. Aren't boxers harder for guys I've heard? Because you have to like kind of push down the bottom part of the shorts. Yeah, you got to do, you got to do the slide. Yeah. Like, you got to make sure you tuck everything in between so yeah. it like sits nicely and it does suck a little bit with what suits what if it rides up it doesn't ride up well, no, not with does. jeans not mine boxers do they get all puffy they get all puffy in your jeans you gotta you gotta just you gotta just get used to it you can do a little shimmy yeah. to get them to go down you got, so shimmy. Colin have you ever gone commando um probably I don't really remember specifically it's not, it wasn't a life changing event I mean there was a time uh, in high school and in yeah I guess uh, depending on where I was living in college where I would I would sleep naked that's about as far as I would go because I, I just felt oh, like oh see and high, pretty much all of high school I slept naked I loved that it. was the one thing but that, that was that was basically so I, not commando but n- not wearing boxers at that particular time we've talked about this a little bit I used to love sleeping naked in high school because in high school I grew up I was in Riverside California where like probably the temperature right now is about 200 degrees it's the temperature of the sun in that damn place and it's super warm and so you you literally if you had clothes on you'd be sweating at night no matter what I'd have a fan on me windows open and my mother was one of those Italian mothers who's like if you turn the air conditioning on I will kill you. <laughs> I will eliminate you because you are costing me money, and there's nothing more important to my Italian mother than saving money. Was, was there a time where it would get too hot where you could put the AC on? Because I was in a similar house, and eventually everyone would break. We would feud, and eventually my my it, it had to be all three my my dad, my brother, and myself both like reaching that breaking point, and then we would all converge upon the thermo- the thermostat and just kick the thing on, and then you'd inevitably hear this: you'd hear like. Who the hell? Who turned that on? <laughs> Who turned it on? And we just be like, hold out for as long as you can. Like we'd be defending it until yeah. she came up. But we could barely hear around. Yeah, you'd have like the three guards, and we'd lose. I mean, it, we'd lose inevitably because my mother is just a force to be reckoned with. But yeah, so to combat that, I would sleep naked, and that had a fun sort of side effect with that. My parents, when I when I was in high school, I used to love sleeping until like one o'clock in the afternoon. And my mom would always be like, you got to get up early and you got to mow the lawn on Saturdays because it gets too hot. Otherwise, then you're not going to do it. And I can't I can't put you out there legally because it's like child, <laughs> you it's will child die. abuse. <laughs> so my dad used to have to come wake me up and he'd come up and he'd throw the covers off me until that one time oh. when I was like, it's too hot. I'm taking everything off. And then he came in and he's like, it's time to get up. I'm never doing that again. <laughs> and I walked out because I was just like, yeah. Oh my God. Well, who wants to spread the butter? And he had, and he had morning. He had some serious morning. Uh, I was playing. I was, I was saluting the flag, so to speak. Saluting the flag. Um, I don't know why. Oh yeah. So I loved. And then I came up to San Francisco, of course. And if you sleep naked in San Francisco, you're gonna die of hypothermia. It's too cold. I there. love it. What I what I like to do because I have a sliding door to the, the porch in the back in my room is I no matter how cold or warm it is, I I have the door open all day, all night. Really? Unless I'm not I here. Do not freeze. And once we, I like because when you're in the covers, it, I used to do it when I lived when I went to college in Boston, which is truly cold. Uh, I used to do the same thing. I'd leave the window open, and then you get under the, and it was like zero degrees out in the winter. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. But then yeah, when you're under the covers, and, it's and fun to cuddle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and you're just like, and and the heat's on, so it's kind of conflicted. But you still have that fresh air coming in. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's that's essential. See, I noticed that Greg doesn't doesn't leave the door open usually ever, and I have no idea how he's not sweltering in that room. I get hot in there, but Christine is one who runs cold. I run hot all the time. I'm always hot. That's the thing. So like, Christine's always cold. So like, the door can't stay open. So like, there's plenty of nights I just sleep. Sprawled out in the in the in the boxer briefs on top of the covers, Pertillo next yeah. to me being a fucking internal or external heater, and then I just eventually get what, cold enough. Why to go does and, he put out so much heat? He's like one pound. I don't know if you looked at him. He's well. First off, he's eleven pounds. He's pure muscle. Look at that. All he wow, is is yes. all he is is muscle. All he, he's That's this so is a dog bred to bread, man. That's all yeah. he's here for, and he's just ready to give it out. There it is. Look at that, Pertillo. You give out that heat, but he, yeah, he's a hot dog. Yeah, Aww. I like that. Thank that. you, thank yeah, you for like that. that. So I recently started this sleeping naked thing. I had never done it in my life. Yeah, and then I was like, I'm gonna try this. I'm gonna do it's it. It's awesome. It's. Never mind. It's cool. Oh, there's a story. Where yeah. is this going? Yeah. Well, I mean, okay, there is <laughs> there is a story. Can I tell the story? It's not even a bad story. I guess. Yeah, it's not a bad story at all. Um, so a couple times ago when I went to Texas, she was like, oh, well, I, I have a bunch of surprises for you. I'm like, okay, cool. This is gonna be fun. Wait, you're sl- like, I sleep oh. naked. Surprise. Slow down. Yeah. Okay. Slow down and tell the story more slowly. God damn it. This, so, so, no, Sorry, so I was like, cool, like, this is going to be fun. Like, what are we going to do? <laughs> Maybe, right? And then um, say things like that? we oh, get in the car. Story. We start, well, that's the source of this. We oh, start okay. driving and she takes me to this random place and she's like cracking up the whole time. And I'm like, where are we going? She's like, oh, I'm not going to tell you. And we pull into this like, just 
it's a lot of trees and like a it's like a beach like a nature park kind of thing <gasps> and i'm just Tell like me it's a nude, be- is it a nude and, beach and, and she's like it's a nude beach and i'm like no i didn't say that the lady at the freaking front goes yeah she wanted it to be a surprise i and wanted she... to surprise him and just like we'd be like walking through like the little hills and trails and all of a sudden like see like a naked person and have him be like what the fuck like, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. And, think, <laughs> yeah and have him just be like what the hell's going on what the fuck yeah exactly <laughs> but we go in and the we have to like you had to pay ten dollars yeah. to get in mm-hmm. and the woman's sitting there and she's like so just so she's like y'all know that uh it's it's clothing optional right and i turned and looked at tim and tim's like and it was like, Shh, yeah, 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 don't say that. And I was like, it was supposed to be a surprise. So continue. then we go and I'm just like, you wait, know so I'm did from... you immediately strip down naked? Well, so we get there and I'm like, first off, you realize I'm from San Francisco, right? Like new beaches. Like this is a yeah, thing. Go to Dolores Park. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had never been to one. Yeah, oh no, I, I had never been to one either. I'll tell So we go and we just start, we just start walking with it and there's just a couple naked people and stuff. And then Were they hot? like. I mean, they were just naked people. No, right? not really. They Thank that you. Good looking. Thanks for being yeah, honest. Was, yeah. So, um, I mean, you know how that. But how, the guys were hung, though. Yeah, that's the thing. Like with these. <laughs> now, did you like when you were you like? I mean, I have to look at that when the guys walk by, or were you like trying well, you to not look? Not. You, yeah, it's pretty much like sticking out there at you. Like, I mean, well, no pun intended. You know. yeah. yeah, like new new beaches are one of those things where it's just you know it's like a bunch of families, right? And like older people, and then just dudes. That no, they look good naked. Yeah, See, that's, that's basically what that was. That's like hiking around, like he just chose to hike like right in front of me. Yeah, and I'm like, you like they're just gone. doing squats, and you're like, why are you, why it's are you like squatting? He could have gone so many different routes, but he just chose to walk right in front of me. Yeah, <laughs> like, and it was, yeah, that's exactly what happened. And then eventually, like she was taking pictures to send her mom, and like she was just taking selfies. And while she was doing this, I dropped my pants, and there's a selfie that I have of her reaction, like looking down, like "Oh my god!" And then yeah, then I was naked. Yeah, and it was awesome. So then we're like, "Fuck this! I'm starting this lifestyle. I'm into this. <laughs> I'm gonna start sleeping naked." And then that's that's the source of that. That's fantastic. And you like yeah. it now? So I like it, but I'm not in like with it. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not, like, I super into means. it. It I, feels, it's good, but then every morning I wake up regretting it. I'm really? I'm always just like, I'm cold now. Oh. Really? I, I like... When I'm going not... to sleep, it feels good. I, I'm a big fan of sleeping naked at hotels for some reason. Well, me too. That's, it's, like, the big thing. You shouldn't, thing. but I like well, it. I walk around my hotel rooms naked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, my, my biggest tradition, even when I go just to Tokyo or Germany or whatever for work, is there's always a bath in the hotel, like, a nice bath in you the take hotel nice room, bath. and I take a bath every fucking night. I'm just like, I gotta live this up while I can. Yeah, yeah, walk yeah, around yeah. naked, got the TV on, every light on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Radio blaring. What's happening? So, she, so, I thought she, the source of him sleeping naked was because I sleep naked. I mean, well, and that, he said he had also, to try it. Sorry. Yeah, that also kind of started it, too. Sure. I didn't say that. But, yeah. Okay. She didn't know if it was acceptable for her to say I understand. she naked. So, it's then, Tim, do you acceptable. go commando If it's now. acceptable for Colin to sleep naked and myself to sleep naked, it's probably more so acceptable for you. Yeah. Commando for girls, though. I don't... Mm. You don't... You know, that's not a thing? Well, girls wear tight jeans. Right. Yeah. So, and... So, it know. should be better to have everything be commando. No, no, because you have the tight of like the inseam on your. Oh, so you, you get the yeah. Uh, wedge, yeah. Like a, you get a jean wedgie. Yeah. That is the like, camel toe they call it, right? The moose knuckle. Yeah, but it's like worse because it's that hard material. I'm like, yeah, no, yeah, there yeah, needs yeah. to be a separation. There's got to be a little buffer. In that, and sure. I just don't feel as, as yeah. So, as that. so but that the only time sense. I did do that was um, my senior year prom. I had to wear an all white dress that was. This sounds of. like the start of a horror story. No, no, no. <laughs> That's what I was worried about. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was so worried because there was it was just tight and it just fit perfectly to where I, there was nothing and I had a really low back. I couldn't I couldn't wear anything underneath that. That was the one time I ever did. I was scared as shit that entire <laughs> night that something might like accidentally happen or go wrong. But luckily. Everything was all right, and it was a success. Yeah, because like, and that's the thing they say a lot. A lot. I, I watch a lot of award shows with my mm-hmm. wife, right? And yeah. so you can't like when something's that skin tight, right. you can't wear anything. You can't underwear. wear it. You have to have a lot, of, even the support for the for the upper part of your body, like built into the dress, right? Or a, bras, sticky, or a sticky, or sticky, or sticky, or those weird things that like, it's yeah, not a sticky is that, bra, is that what yeah. or chicken cutlet. Some people call them. I don't like. Oh, I've name. seen chicken. Have you seen those things? Well, they're basically like you it's know just glued a bra bricks that, that just stick under there, yeah. like, get everything up, which is cool. Yeah, I'm which not, is cool. Yeah, which is I wore cool. that underneath it. That worked. Well, there you so. go. I'm not down with the commando thing because I like, I just, I wear my jeans pretty, like not too high, but like higher than a lot of people do, but lower than. Not higher than Greg. No. Greg seems no, to his this. chin. <sighs> what I mean is like, I don't sag my pants, but like I don't pull them up all the way. So I need some type <laughs> of undergarment to like kind of come out a little bit at the top. 
You know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah, I understand. Like, grass crack showing. Exactly yeah, it's like I need that little line to like hide the the man crack, the, the yeah. goods. Yeah, yeah, the plumber crack. That's so yeah, so I need that, and also I've had a, a couple horror stories with involving my wiener and the, the teeth. The teeth. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Have you yeah, done it? I've got so, them. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, you know, it's all it takes that's is that pain. one time. You don't want that pain when you never want it, and this isn't related to zippers, but it, it is a huge reason why now I'm like super scared of that type of stuff. Um, there was one time when I was studying for a test. I just told you this story recently. Um, I was studying for a test and you I was reading, to take a break, reading a piece of paper and I was <gasps> oh, going to take gosh. a shower and um, I are, had to take a shower. Are you naked? What? You're yeah. reading a piece of paper. I was naked? reading a piece of paper and then I had to take a shower, but I was like, fuck, I don't have much time to like, you know, well, study. So I need to keep yeah. doing this. Right. So I was just reading, reading and I like, put it down on my sink. And like the paper was kind of off. Oh, yeah. God, and I, I turned like on the radio going. and that everybody dance now. Bro. And you started, started dancing. So I started dancing and I'm naked. <laughs> and you know, that's just what happens, right? Like the, there's just, a, when there's a mirror, we were talking about this earlier. Right. Guys really like their wieners. I love so I'm looking in the mirror, I'm looking at my wiener and I'm like, this is cool. And I, I just start like, then I spin around at one part oh, and it spins and I feel my wiener kind of hit the, the paper, oh, but I'm just like, whatever. It was fine. And, and I then, get, then I get blood the, all over the room. I get in the shower and like the water hits it and I'm Opens like, the oh my bit. God, what yeah. just happened? And I just realized I got a paper cut. And then I looked down right across the hole. Jesus. Just a freaking... So it's like a plus sign? Yeah. <laughs> there's a plus sign. Motherfucker. So of course, been... of course, with my first cell phone I ever had, I take a picture. So I'll always have that. What, that is, what is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> Can I, I see, see the photo? <laughs> yeah, I showed you it. I, uh... Not the picture. I what? cut my balls with a razor once, but it was oh, uh, me too. Yeah, but it was it was unfortunate because I've always shaved with down there with like just a Mach three or whatever. And my girlfriend had this has this thing where it's like I don't know like what kind of it's like a special razor that twenty blades. No, it's not. It's not the amount of blades. It's like something where it's like a little raise to I guess help like. I think it's for men, like, to help, like, shave down a little bit, but not all mm. the way or whatever. So the blade's, like, a little bit raised. And she's like, try using this thing. Instead, it came with, like, your Mach 3 set or whatever. And I was like, okay. Oh, like, so, kind of extra teeth hanging off of it? Yeah. The razor's underneath it? Yeah, of? yeah. Like, yeah. It's, it's so it doesn't shave it bald. Yeah, yeah. And I, like, use it. You know, you pull it taut. Pull it taut. You know? Yeah, you gotta you get, get a nice piece of surface. Like, yeah. And I fucking nailed, nailed it. it. Oh. Like, and I got so... I actually... I feel bad because I took it all out of her. I'm like, why did you give me this fucking thing? I've been doing this for years and years and no never, incident. And like, it's been 187 and like days, no incident. And like, slash my ball. Like I was, and like I was in the shower and it was like the blood was just like coming down my oh leg. My and then in the like, and like when the, the, the when the hot like water hits it, that's, that's when you the, wake up. Yeah, that's yeah. when you're like something. And I was happening. scared because I'm like, damn, like this is. It's a lot of blood flow. This is, yeah, I'm like Jesus Christ. Like, am I like is am I okay? Stitches? There's yeah. something about ball injuries that is just unlike any because other. Because you're terrified that it's gonna but hurt you for later. Well, not only that life. though, like the cut doesn't go away for so long. Like no, when, when so that happened to me, and I think the only the I only time it's ever happened to me was and when what? I first the idea of manscaping occurred to me back in the day. I think it was like early college. I was like, I will, I would, I should take care of that area right i'm sexually active now i should probably keep, <laughs> i've become sexually active. i have to make sure my backyard Back is completely groomed if i want to have a barbecue um <laughs> and so i was like well what do i do it with right? i didn't realize you should probably use a razor because that's a more precise instrument i tried to do it with just the norelco beard shaver like oh <laughs> i thought you were gonna say scissors yeah oh, me too no. i didn't know where we we're going no, with no, this. No, this is worse though because the beard shaver is you have to have a tight smooth surface mm -hmm. that you roll over it with otherwise like, you know, your skin on your face is different than your skin, obviously, on your scrotum, where your skin on your scrotum is a lot more malleable in that it tends to get sucked up into things a little bit more. <laughs> so you go, no. you try, like, I was like, all right, I'll just try to this and thing. And it had the guard on, right? But what I didn't realize was the guard wasn't going to, wasn't. Guard and shit. It's not guard shit. And so literally within, like, the first three seconds, I was like, we're done. That's it. And that thing bled, and it just yeah, because it, it the razors as they move this way, yeah. it just sucked up the skin right into it. Oh my god! No. And just nice little pierce right across. It's hard, like, man. I'm never doing this again. That's yeah. just a harsh reality of of you know group. Like, you got to go slow, and yeah. you have to be like and precise, you have to be and deliberate, deliberate. Yeah. See, at this point, like like I said, I've been really scared off this stuff. I essentially just leave my balls alone. Really? Yeah. Oh, I, I, I like I like a, a, a shorn scrotum. There's nothing quite as breathtaking yeah. as a Sean Scrotum. <laughs> well, Doctor Evil action. Uh, yeah, I mean, to, like it's it's dangerous down there, man. But you got to you got to take care of it. I think you got to take care of it. Yeah, I've been getting you know. True. You it, can't not fight that battle. I remember the first time I did it when I was in high school. I was like, damn, I gained 
a lot of girth down here just by getting rid of this thing. That's you what I've heard from guys. Yeah, and you don't that. and you don't realize it until it's until it's just bare down there. You know, well, I've gotten a little, I, at my old age. It's funny. I got you know. I've gotten. I don't a take little, the grass out completely. I just keep. Oh, it I, I do tight. But you just go bare. Yeah, because and then I just let it grow you're back like, for like, like weeks, and then I just yeah. let it go, and then I do it again. Because otherwise, it's like that's like that's too statue. much work. But talking about ball pain, real quick, I just I've been talking to my girlfriend about this recently because every once in a while she'll she'll like you know like tap yeah. me or, or go like that like to, like when I do oh, something no. wrong. Girls have no, inter- no no and I'm like and no she's way. and she'll yesterday well, just yesterday we were watching I said something snarky to her and she was just like that on my bed. Like, and I was like <laughs> and it's like and I'm like and I'm like you don't understand it's that hollow. Ache. It goes all the way up yeah, to your and neck. Yeah, and like it takes That's time. That's the worst part. Yeah, you, you know, know it's coming. Ha- You're like, oh, God, here. Oh, ah. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. weird, too. It doesn't really hurt your balls. It's all in your neck. Yeah, I'm kind of curious about It this. makes It I'm hurts your like, stomach and like, like yeah. it makes you like almost nauseous. Do you guys have the one friend? I have oh, yeah. the, I have the one friend that it's still a thing for. Like we're drinking and we'll all be like, I haven't seen him in six months and we'll all be drinking and it's like, ha 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 ha. And then you get that one second where he looks and you're, and you know, and you're like, oh, I'm not, I'm not fast enough to deal with it because I'm drunk. And he just lays into it, tries to catch both at the same time. And then it's a thing for the rest of the yeah. weekend. If you're at a wedding or something, the rest of the weekend you have to get each other back. And like See, to I the point where someone's bl- bleeding that, on the man. ground. Like that's so not cool. Yeah. There's like a, a dude code. There's a fuck that. There's a human code. You should not human do that code to anybody. But it's so funny to me. It's still so when it's not happening to me. I think it's the funniest thing when someone just walks by and like, hey, what's up? And the guy's not looking, and you just give him a little. That's just, just backhand it, and they See, cr- they crumble. That sucks because I would never do that to someone, and then motherfuckers just do it to me all the time, and I'm just like, great. Now I'm just in pain. So you start that game though. That's that's you, you can't end that game ever. Once that game started, it's like a gang. You're in. You're in. Yeah. You can't get jumped out. You're a jet for life. Well, this is actually a really funny segue. Did you hear about gang related? Greg Ways. Gang related. Yeah. What? No. The new game at IGN. Oh, there was gosh. a new game created by Kevin and Alex Salamita called Gang Related where they have this bean bag and then they sit and they just toss at each other's dicks. <laughs> so it's like, it is the same exact thing. It's like a gang. <laughs> and they see how far they can get. Good story. All right. <laughs> Just Amazing. That's what we do. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, that's another episode of the Game Over Greggy Show. It's been our pleasure to serve you this evening. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Kara. Thanks, Kara. Thank y'all for this having me. No, thank you for coming. I had a lot of fun. Y'all are yeah. very, very interesting. I like when you say y'all. It makes me I know, really happy. Fun. I didn't even realize I'd do it. But I did meet a guy on the plane who said hella, and I knew he was from California. <laughs> like, are you related to Tim Gettys? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> thank you, Colin. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, remember, the Game Over Gregory Show posts every week. It is for sometimes five best friends around this table, bringing random topics of conversation for your enjoyment. We post the entire show every Friday as an MP3 for $1 at gameovergregory.bandcamp.com. If you don't think we're worth it, we understand we don't think we're worth Such it either. Such a great deal. Oh, we, I mean, we totally are. We totally think we're worth it. Come to YouTube.com slash GameOverGreggy Monday through Friday. Every topic gets broken out one by one until the entire show goes up. Then make sure you go to districtlines.com slash GameOverGreggy. Buy t-shirts like this Oreogasm one. Oh, it's a great t-shirt. Me dance. That looks like heaven feels dance. on people's skin. That made no sense. Nope. <laughs> it's been our pleasure serving you. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Settle down. You know what I'm saying, Moriarty? Mm. Huh? Mm. Huh? Mm. Give me a grin. Give me a grin. Give... There it is. There's <laughs> that award-winning <laughs> smile. Do I sound all right? You sound fantastic.